Mommy, get out of there, please. All right, if anybody is popping in right now, we're kind of testing it out because we were having issues getting people to hear the audio, and we do not want to do that again. So that's where we're at. If you can hear me, I see there's two people in there. Can you please comment that you can hear me? Hopefully we'll have Chantel and Stephanie Brennan on soon so we can test that out too. No. no, I can hear you. I can hear you. There are and 10 Gwendolyn people she can hear. watching. Deborah, you're on. Oh. You can hear me. Can you hear Chantel? Can you hear Chantel today? Can you see Chantel today? Yes. Can you hear and see Chantel today? This is this is key. <laughs> Although we're all here for Stephanie. Well, no, it's your fault. Oh, too. well, Gwendolyn says she can hear me. Oh, yay. But can you see me? Not in the Zoom, of course. Can you see me like in the YouTube's land? Maybe, maybe not. You can hear you, but not see you. We might turn the, the live off and on a couple times as we work on settings. So if you are here, we are kind of just testing out ahead of time uh, to figure things out. So I am going to. Oh, you'll get to hear our fun banter you while will. we do it actually together at once for once. <laughs> it will be fun. So go live. Okay. That is not what I want. Because I might Zoom live streaming. So here's what I think the weird thing is, is originally when I set it up the first time, you were, mm -hmm. I was able to select Zoom as a source and I have not been able to select that sense for a stream key. So I th think something is weird. But why? I'm not sure. Cause it's just not, it's just not an option or. It's not an option. It's like grayed out. Oh, okay. do you need to do an update or something? I don't think so. I do. Ooh. Okay. Send to zoom web portal. I'm going to learn how to use settings. Zoom just so I can figure this out. <laughs> okay, so let me see. If also, I, have I think everything there, we didn't even properly. get a pop up done this week for we did like not. Instagram or anything. So I had I had a week. Um, <laughs> yeah, you had a week. I have had both children in the ER. They are both fine, um, but basically, my older child has very little spatial awareness, apparently, and. <laughs> Fell down half a flight of stairs. So she's it's her okay. fault twice. She's okay. Um, she was a little sore and she had to be out of gym and dance for a couple of days, but she's she's all right. And then later in the week, she accidentally hit her sister in the head with an aluminum baseball bat on the first nice day of spring. And when I took her to the ER, um, there were about half a dozen children who had injuries on the first nice day of spring. So we were not alone. But not even close. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is not good. Yep. It rains, it pours. It poured this week. It did pour this it week. It did pour and this week. you did some traveling. I did. Well, not travel, travel. I well, I'm teaching at a quilt show, um, like 40 minutes from my house, the Muscatine Melon Patcher. So if you are near the Quad Cities or Muscatine, I am back there tomorrow. Um, I taught a class today. And tomorrow I am lecturing and I'm going to bring some quilts to kind of show how I choose color and design quilts based on the color, the scale and the color value of um, the fabrics I'm working with. And so I'm going to show you guys some options and how I kind of came up with some designs based like that. And then um, I am going to be given a pattern 
um, that someone wants to pull fabric for and a stack of fabrics. And I'm going to pull, do a fabric pull live and talk through why I'm making what decisions I'm making. And then we're going to go Ooh. the other way. Someone's bringing me a fat quarter and I've got to pick a fat quarter bundle and I have to pick a fabric that will work or a pattern that will work with it based on, again, color value scale and um, what colors we're working with and number of fat quarters, because obviously that matters too. We don't want to have to go get more and we also need to not have like not our mess. So that'll that be sounds fun. sounds like a game show I want to be in. It was, it is fun. I mean, you could drive out. It would be like two hour drive for you. Um, but That's true. You, you just could do text it. John right now and be like, I'm sorry. She I need your wife. Path. I need your wife tomorrow. Um, okay. I finally hit the right part of the meeting section. That would be really fun actually to do on air here. One of the, one of our Fridays. Yeah, kind of see like what you would do and what I would do. Well, yeah, it's going to be different. I wonder person. how different it would end up being. But my uh, the person who hired me is someone I've known for like a long time. And she's like, I brought like my whole thing of brights. And I was like, that's good. And I was like, this is a good color value mix. She's like, no, maybe I should bring some more things. She's like, do you want to see what I have? I'm like, no, I don't. I need it to be like, no. we need to do it live. It makes a lot of sense, though, because the whole point is to be able to grab whatever is yeah. in front of you. Otherwise, you're going to think about it, especially you. I will think about it. What I do when I design is I 100% um, just kind of look at the fabric and then I go do something else completely. And that is what I do to make that not work. You let it pop me. into your head. I do. Organically. And usually it does. Sometimes I have to, you know, work it out a little bit, but. Well, this is what you did for years. For five years straight. We, I like did the math today. It was five years straight every single month. I did that. So and how I still did you it. become able to trust yourself in those decisions? Was it just time of doing it over and over again? Uh, mostly. Or did you learn a few skills that were like, this always works? I definitely learned skills. So like. I don't have any actual fat quarter bundles because they're all arranged in bins right now. But oh, I have like thirty thousand of yours over. <laughs> I bet you do. Um, I do. <laughs> but hang on. yeah, I'm right trying here. to find. I love this one. Allow... This one was a big. What am I one looking for at? me? I'm also Tamaricate. looking at things. Oh, Tamaricate. I saw someone was using that fabric today. Um, I I think I'm going to use this for the quilt on our trip. That is for Angie. Okay. That's for cool. her um for her project. The scissors one. What do you call it? The make the cut. Yeah. So no angel. um like even though the sorry, I'm also trying to figure out what is wrong with Zoom while I'm answering this question. But um essentially what I do is even though a, there's digital ca printing capabilities now, right? So Mm -hmm. They don't have to be limited to what what made screen printing expensive was the number of screens that you had to print. So that's why like Tula will have one that has all the colors in it. And then there will be several more that have far less colors in it. It's because you have to right. use less screen. So that fabric is less expensive to print. And then they even out the cost of that over, you know, the entire collection. And right. there's so, one that's really expensive and there's others that are way adjacent. less. They're like the side dishes. Yeah. And so that's the main cost in developing fabric is that rotary screen printing production. And so for years, when that was the main way of doing it, that's why you would see the same print in three or four different colorways. And right you know, a, several different tones along the way. So you, I would get a lot of fabric bundles in that were a whole lot of white, like sometimes up to six whites in there. And you're like, what am oh, I going to yeah. do with this? If I want to use a light background, because you can't have a successful block. If you have something that is essentially that the same sense. color value right next to background fabric. And for us, it always sold better when we had a white background 
um, than if we did anything else. So I was really kind of limited there. That's a really great option of that. Exactly. You see how many whites yeah. there are in that. So you have yeah. to then figure out how am I going to separate that from the outside so that I can have it. So a lot of the designs, whenever I would see something like that, you a lot of times see different color, um, things like you need X amount of light, you need X amount of medium, you need X awesome. amount of dark. And I would design the block to okay. use it so that all of the light prints are on the inside. And then we gradually get darker as we work our way out. So that way, by the time we get to the background fabric, nothing light is touching it. And so you have a successful block, but right. it's just planned out that way. All right. I'm letting Stephanie in. You can ask her questions now while I try and figure out what's going on with you. Good. Because I am good at asking questions. I'm you like are good at asking kid. questions. It's like, why? 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 <laughs> <laughs> so you guys, you guys chitter chatter amongst yourselves. And for those of you watching on YouTube, I am currently trying to figure out what the heck is going on and why you can't see these lovely ladies, but you'll be able to hear them. So if you do, you do see us, let us know though, because that means Stephanie did the right thing. <laughs> we I think that, that would that be is. important too. Yeah. That would mean I need yet another screen open. I have so many screens going right now. All right. Where's my Stephanie Brennan at? Hey, I'm right here. Can you see me? Yeah, I'm trying to change the thing so I can see everybody. There we go. And I'm trying to get it where it's going to pick me up. I have a personal documentary guy, apparently. My computer thinks, like, it just wants to follow <laughs> me everywhere. Fancy. Real quick, for those of you who are watching on YouTube, um, after we get through kind of an interview portion with Stephanie... We're going to allow you guys to all join in. Actually, maybe we can allow you to join in now while I'm messing with stuff. Yeah, um, pregame kind let's, of a let's do that. situation here. We are going to keep you guys on. I asked you to keep yourselves on mute. You can turn your cameras on. Um, we encourage it because then we know that, like, you're probably a quilter and not. Um, There's no creepers. Yeah, not a creeper. No creepers. Um, yeah. But. Here is the Zoom invite link. You guys can join um, over there. And that way you can see the people who are talking. I am going to be able. It, I do know that it is recorded in the gallery view of this. So. Oh, good. Um, I did not get to posting it last week. Because literally Saturday morning. The first thing my daughter did was fall down half a flight of stairs. And then my week just kind of went down it's from true. there. So. <laughs> just went down the stairs too. it did it also went down the stairs along with that but if you would like to join in just bring yourself on keep yourself on mute keep your video on that's totally cool and then eventually we will um do like our sit and stitch again and open it up for questions for stephanie too so if you want to participate and be able to see everybody pop over there in the meantime i'm going to be trying to troubleshoot zoom and figuring out what the heck is going on right now because it's and then i will topics. start picking stephanie brennan's mind yeah because you i have do a that. couple topics that are off topic to tackle first apparently we are both bluey slash tula fans yes i love bluey and tula see and so she had the dilemma of trying to figure out do i watch tula launch her new line of fabric or do i watch bluey the other day. I mean, and to clarify, why don't you do both? <laughs> <laughs> and to clarify, um, the Tula Tula thing was not live, so it was um, it was recorded on Facebook. And I was watching. It was, and I feel like it's important to mention that it was the episode was Sleepy Time, which is you know the, the best, best Bluey episode. Like, do you know that there's perfect. a Sleepy Time book now? It's available at Target. Oh. I no might need to go. You need to go. You just right now. I have the music though, and that's one of the things that I love about Sleepy Time. It is great music, but it also is really great to read at bedtime. Yeah, I might need to anyway because it it's such a such a fabulous episode. Um, but I was watching it with my three year old, who refused to nap, and so I was just trying to do something low key until we left to go get my five year old from preschool. And so it's like, okay, do I watch Sleepy Time with my three year old? Or do I watch Tula on my phone? <laughs> Wild okay, so days. that that is a dilemma too. You what? That that is a dilemma for sure. Like, yeah, 
you choose your own happiness or do you choose your own happiness? Like you exactly. Right. Like no matter what you do, you're either going to lose, you're going to lose and you're going to win somebody. Yeah. If your kids aren't happy, you're not happy. Yeah. Ain't that the truth? Or your husband's. Oh, or (laughs) wives or whoever you have. It's just like all your people or your animals. They'll let you know if they have grievances. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) <laughs> so I thought that was funny. I'm pretty excited about the new collection. It has yeah, no it, animals. That Did does make me a little bit sad, but it it's really pretty. Like she really pulled it off. Oh, well, every time. I love anytime she does botanicals, but my favorite thing is that she said that she doesn't actually know what flowers really look like. Like she's not a garden person. <laughs> and I so relate to that because I can't keep a single thing alive in a garden. Um, we're gonna we're gonna work on I that know this it's year. Pretty. Yeah, we're <laughs> you think you're gonna fix that, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> we're work at a local garden center for about six months. You'll learn about everything you need to know. That's what I did. Yeah, well, there you go. <laughs> gonna know it all. I'll just take the knowledge, you know. <laughs> She wants to grow grass and uh, eliminate weeds. Yeah, and I, we have no I grass may right have now. edited an epic lawn care video for our local garden center on that this week. So I, I've got some some ideas for you. Thank God. It's, it's looking pretty bad out there. The kids were out there with like their own little like spatula diggy thing. I don't know what you even call the things. They had <laughs> they had little Harbor Freight glasses on and their little diggy mittens. Yeah. See, I don't even know what the terminology is. Gardening gloves. Gardening gloves. Yeah. Clearly. They make them in child size. It's pretty cute. Digging mittens. (laughs) (laughs) They were digging mittens. Um, I think that lawns are stupid and grass is stupid and we shouldn't grow it, but that might ever, most people I know disagree with me on that. Actually, there is some research behind that. I, I went to design school some of you may know this, but I went to design school for interior design and architecture. And so we touch on landscape more so to just admit that it is also a design service and that we don't do it. Um, but one of the projects we did was a project to build a house under $100,000 in New Orleans back in what 2010. Um, and we had to do the entire scale of the building, including the landscaping for that price, because there were a lot of Katrina victims needing homes. And we actually got second in the contest in the state. So our building did not get built. The guy that got first did. But we had to go through the whole thing about like grass versus like other ground coverings. Learned a few things. So there is. Learned that grass is finicky. There is grass seed um, that has clover in it, which is supposed to grow a more low maintenance lawn. But it, uh, I personally would like to eliminate the clover because it just kind of spreads everywhere and it doesn't look nice. So I don't know. I told I'm about to just I told the garden center flowers person flowers I'm just going to do everything she says this year, and we'll have a really good transformation video next year. But we're not here to talk about lawns. We're here to talk about fabric. We love a good tangent. Yes, we did get (laughs) on. That's why we all sit here and sew together. But (laughs) let's see. I don't want to start too early because 9.30 is usually like. It is usually our time. Hit the interview time. That's fine. I think I I may have. Touching on sewing topics. (laughs) Let's try a crossover topic of my big question is cotton versus cotton lawn. So. Stephanie, why don't you go ahead and introduce what, where you went to school, how you ended up working for Stephanie. Well, I want to call her Dave Pasquale because I've known her forever. Uh, <laughs> this is true. Stephanie, I only know how to pronounce her last name because she's on these videos. <laughs> um, You've been in my phone true. as Chantel Ireland for a very long time. Just so you know. <laughs> Which I know is not right, Pasquale. but I think you had it on Facebook. I had it on Facebook for a while that way. Yeah. So, (laughs) but the big thing we're going, as many of you know, we're going to Liberty of London soon. What is the difference between cotton lawn and regular cotton? And then let's try to kind of segue that into what you've done. How'd you get here? Why are you on a a quilt along with us right now? (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah, sure. So, um, so I actually had not worked with cotton lawn a whole lot before we did the, um, the garment sewing series at Quilt yeah. Addicts. Um, but so the, the biggest difference is there, so they're both hundred percent cotton, obviously, but the cotton lawn has a much silkier feel to it. And it has a much, um, I don't want to say looser drape, but like flowier drape. It's generally a lighter weight fabric. Um, I don't know if it has, I should have, I'm kind of surprised that the nerd in me didn't look this up, but I kind of wonder if it has more of a different weave, like a sateen weave, which gives it that more of a shimmery look. Um, like I a lot of it backings have a sateen weave in it, which gives it yeah. makes them feel much smoother, much silkier. Um, but the quilt backings are, they feel thicker than the cotton lawn. Is it a thread count thing? It could be a thread count thing, um, which a thread count can be kind of a misnomer um like you're not mm-hmm. getting quite as much information with the thread knowing the thread count because it also depends on the type of thread the quality of thread um like there you can have a, a fabric that's a lower thread count that's still a much higher quality than one that's higher if you if you're using better threads and better yarns with it okay that actually makes a ton of sense immediately when you say sateen i think of like the tula background like yes. the backings that she makes mm-hmm. because they are like they are so silky they mm-hmm. hang beautifully like drapery yes hang. um because i'm trying to make draperies out of some if i could afford to buy the rest of the yardage really yeah tula backings not cheap but yeah yeah it's it's sadly very expensive <laughs> yeah it's it's very expensive <laughs> it's hard to stomach that for like draperies, but um, I think we're close enough to time. Do you think so? Are we working? Can anybody see us on? That's what YouTube? I'm trying to figure out. I did hmm. just change a setting, so we will find out. Maybe, maybe our girl, our girl Gwendolyn, can figure this out. Let us know, oh, buddy. She's every time. Oopsie. Hang on. Let me mute this. Oops. <laughs> it's it's serving me an ad here hey that you know that's yeah, all yeah. I have to do. so far we Yay, have made enough ad. ad revenue for us to be able to have uh one extra drink so yeah <laughs> the gross eat. so you know <laughs> man this is purely about us and entertaining everybody and not necessarily making the content that everybody's so craving Unless your content is enjoying time in your basement after hours sewing, then this is for you. <laughs> okay, record active speaker. Let's try this. See if we can get this to work. All right, guys, say some fun things. Onomatopoeia. We'll see what the audience thinks. Bluey or too long? <laughs> I mean, Bluey is pretty good. <laughs> and Sleepy Time is like the best episode. Oh my gosh, it really is. <laughs> hey, we're newer to Bluey because my kids like spanned that time and now Hazel's very into it. So we have it on all the time. But it's, yeah, sorry. My machine has to fart when it starts every single time. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's like the Bernina fart. People call it the growl. I'm like, no, it's tooting. So, like, the needle goes down, it has to decide where it is, and it goes, huh, My mom has a Bernina. I'll have to ask her if, if yeah. her machine farts. Yeah, the, they'll say it's the growl, and I'm like, no, it's clearly a toot. It is tooting. <laughs> I'm yep. not sure that we're Another really this. good Bluey episode for just the music is in season three is Rain. Recording in progress. I am now oh, recording. We are recording. I was not recording before this, because I'm a hot mess. Today. Oh, well. That's okay. Okay. Ooh, what is How going is the on the sound zoo? for you guys while I sew? Misty, if you didn't mean to leave the Zoom, you can pop back in and I will add you back in. Here, I'm going to uh, pin our thing to the top. So the Zoom link is now at the top of the chat. This is so highly And annoying. also, if you don't want to be in right now and you want to be bop back in later when we open it up, or sip and sew or whatever we're calling this adventure. 
then that's fine. Too. It's called Stephanie plays with Zoom settings for. Hours. <laughs> Stephanie plants with Zoom settings. We got to make that a little more <laughs> alliterative. Oh, goodness. Oh, Lord. Oh, we Lord. need to find somebody that knows how to do this. I know. For right? real. I feel like I should know somebody that knows how to do this, but oh well. I mean, none of them want to sit here for three hours. And there this. are services that we could pay for. Oh. God, but why when they could suffer with us? <laughs> oh goodness. Okay, goes back to my tech stuff. But anyway, all right. So lawn, a little bit lighter drape. Definitely, like we were like holding them up, and like it was so much more flowy with the lawn than it was with anything else. Mm -hmm. So. I'm oh, trying to see. It almost feels like it has starch in it, and then I go ahead and make it feel like paper when I sew with it. But um, yeah, it, it. I had a dress on my daughter today that I had made for her out of quilting cotton, and it wasn't steam pressed after I got it out of the wash, and it still has that very like boxy figure. Like you almost have to shape it again. Yeah. To um. Yeah, to become drapey. Well, and I have made a lot of dresses for the girls out of quilting cotton. And it's fine for that, but it's not so fine when it's like you doing it. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. well, that's because the little girls can look good in like little paper bags and they look adorable in their little Tula bags, you know, <laughs> but I don't look so good in a little Tula bag. <laughs> <laughs> Not so much, no. Not Although so I much. am supposed to be making myself a circle skirt from the cape back that's in the backing. Yeah, that's a, the a backing whole other different animal. Stuff. Yeah, and that's going to be fun. It's going to be, awesome. be very, very fun. Okay. I don't making know a circle that. skirt out of quilt backing is one of the things on my bucket list. Well, because you I use the mood um, calculator. There's a calculator, a circle skirt calculator, a mood. And anytime you want to have a midi skirt, which I do because I am not 22 anymore, um, I just like the knees to be covered. You know, you no, need more. <laughs> you need more than like everything else is wide enough on the market. So it just you doesn't. You see work. some of the dresses I'm bringing on this trip. It's funny because I'll be like all covered up here, and then it's just like all leg. Not that I have a lot of leg. I'm five mm -hmm. one and a half. But you know what I mean? Like as much <laughs> leg as you can possibly find on me, it is there. Well, because God forbid they look at anything else that my children affected. <laughs> whereas I am emphasizing the my other chest on everything. Affected. And <laughs> and the area right below it, because that's the thinnest part of me. And then everything else is flowing. <laughs> <laughs> Although, oh my God. So I was teaching. I'm going to have to make a circle top, I guess, because I got to show the legs. <laughs> I was teaching um, today and, you know, as usual, I'm the youngest one in the room. And I was talking about. 15 years running. <laughs> I know, right? So, yeah, I can't wait to see the pants either. I have to actually buckle down and, and make those pants, Tiffany. <laughs> but anyway, I. um. I was teaching and I've had a new bodily thing go wrong this week as part of age and things being larger than they should be. I have a pinched nerve in my, um, the side of my leg and it's making my outer thigh go numb. And I've talked to my doctor about this and oh. it used to just be when I laid down in certain positions. Now it's all the damn time and it hurts oh, no. and it feels like burning pins and needles and it doesn't get better with medication because the nerve can't, it, it's not touching the can't nerve. Release. It's already messed up. And so I'm like, oh my God. So I had like a salad for dinner and because basically the cause of it is I'm carrying too much weight in my midsection and it's pinching the nerve. And so I'm like, okay, Stephanie, this is your wake up call that you have your body can't handle this you got to get it together and it's just like oh i'm getting old and things oh, are breaking i feel that 
Things well, are breaking. The skirt will at least make you look good. It will. You I'm know. gonna want to kill myself wearing the heels in it, probably if this is still <laughs> going on when we go there. Apparently, it's supposed it's to come okay. and go. Your friend that's with you is shorter than you, so you have nothing to prove. <laughs> it's true, but I like wearing it because it makes me look taller. I know Slip. you've had some of the Helps. most killer heels. Oh, I still have some of the killer heels. Mm. I have heels that I had when I was in college. Still, you still have those. I have some pink polka dot heels. Oh my gosh. I know I'm again I'm, we are completely off topic. We are. I don't even know why we try to have a show. <laughs> you should just talk about the random Okay. So Stephanie, you're yes. you're our guest. We should stop talking about random things and start talking about <laughs> well, I what can, you're doing. um I guess I can go back and introduce myself. Yes, so that, that would probably know. be a good idea, especially since we're <laughs> so recording. I'm now. also Stephanie, not to be confused with Stephanie Sebbing. I'm Stephanie Brennan. Um I so my interest in fashion, I, I've always liked kind of creative things. And my grandma taught me how to sew when I was in the fourth grade. Um, we we handmade a quilt together. Like the entire thing was hand stitched. Oh. Um, and then I didn't really touch it at all again until college. And I started off as an, an education major. I went to Ball State University, which is one of the like really well-known schools for education and at least in Indiana has a really, really good education program. And I wanted to be a biology teacher. Um, and like halfway into that first semester, I realized this is not for me. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, just, and it's not like the teaching itself that I didn't enjoy. Cause I like, I like teaching. I like, you know, helping and educating, but like everything else that goes into teaching. Cause I think anybody who knows a teacher knows that maybe 20% of their job is actually teaching. And yeah. the other 80% is a lot of managing yeah yeah and I just didn't want to deal with that so um I ended up going to fashion design which kind of surprised everybody that knew me because they knew that I was creative but that was something that I had never really shown much interest in um but it was something that I really really enjoyed and I really enjoyed like the hands-on process of it the creativity of it and one thing that I've gathered since graduating at graduating Ball State and talking to other people who have been involved in other fashion programs is the emphasis at Ball State because they I mean they weren't like super super well known for their fashion design program but like locally in the Midwest it, it was a respectable program oh yeah um, yeah so as somebody who went to a, a design school that had a fashion program yeah Ball State at, for that part of design was definitely an option yeah yeah, I mean, not like, you know, strong option, like you could, you could become somebody who is an employable professional. Yeah, because there are definitely programs, you know, in colleges that we all know that are better known for their keggers than for their uh, degrees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Ball State's yeah, good. <laughs> and they're like, their they're emphasis good. looking back has really been on like the technical construction aspect of it. And like, I remember in, I, in, my, in my internship, I interned at a, a custom bridal shop and d the different things that she was, she was teaching me along, like stuff to look for, I really picked up very quickly. And she said that like, that was, has been her experience with Ball State students is that they have a really, really strong handle on the patterns and how, and how the garments are put together and how to change it, how to alter it and how to make it look the way you want it to look. Um, and That's then halfway, my struggle. I'm, <laughs> um, like halfway into my final semester at Ball State or maybe my, my senior year. So like that, I have one semester yeah. left. I realized that I hated my degree. Um, <laughs> and, oh no. Yeah. Well, like, but that had more to left. do with like the industry of fashion. Yes. It a hundred percent. Like it wasn't, and I still like really, really enjoy the creative hands-on process of it. Um, but the industry itself is what really burnt me out. Um, cause like the last three, two, two, three semesters are really focusing more on like the big picture of everything. And I remember one class in particular, we're talking about like outsourcing and globalization of fashion. And it talked about, you know, going to third world nations and doing your production there. And like, I'm not completely opposed to that because like that's giving people, you know, so as long as those people are treated well and paid well, um, right. 
and it's acting like a stepping stone for them because like they're human beings too. They need to make a living too. Um, but this textbook made it sound like, oh, it's an inconvenience that these people don't have running water and they don't speak English. And it's like, really? It's an that's, inconvenience for them, maybe. Yeah, it's like, but it's like that's your takeaway from this? Like, not that you know, we can Yeah. Maybe yeah. pay them so enough like, so oh, that they can have bad, running water. Yeah. <laughs> a bad taste in your mouth at that it really point. Because it's um yeah. It's just the this the fickleness of it, the this how shallow and superfluous. I'm just like, ugh, gross. Um but that's, and so I really didn't touch it for almost two decades. <laughs> um, I just kind of jumped from job to job, mostly doing customer service type things, trying to figure out, it's like, okay, I'm an actual grown up now and I have to support myself. And <laughs> what am I going to do? <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm there so, too. <laughs> well, like, I picked up quilting again right be, right before the pandemic my dad or i'm sorry my my mom and my husband teamed together and bought me a new sewing machine cuz i had still been using the the brother um was it this s6000i that i'd been using in college <laughs> and and i mean for for a $200 machine that we bought at walmart in 2004 like that puppy like we got our money's worth <laughs> oh yeah i have one of those singers from walmart up on my shelf is my first sewing machine too. Yeah. I I relate. Yeah, mine is at my sister's it was, house. It was time to it was time to get a new one, and so they got me a nicer machine. Um, and that's when I really got into quilting. And then COVID hit, and <laughs> it's like, okay, we're gonna yeah, we're gonna do this a lot more. But um, well, I think you had been to the shop before we moved, right? Yeah, well, not before you moved. It was at the location okay. that you were at then, but before, like when it was still a brick and mortar shop. Yeah, <laughs> um, I went was there for like maybe two months. <laughs> and then, was it really that short of a time? It was. We moved in October. I think we opened I up like right before months. November, right before like our Black Friday stuff, and then. Lily was six weeks old when we basically shut our doors. So. And moved to your coffee table. Yeah. At that point. <laughs> well, no, we had to relocate the coffee table because there wasn't room for me to fill orders in the living room and Adam to ship in, in front of the front door and Angela to do her kindergarten from school. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! It was uh, my house I remember was small. watching that whole saga with you guys. On, oh my god, it was so small on social media and just being like, "I feel so bad for you." I mean, it was. I fine. didn't watch it at all because we were, it was just we were so s- terrifying to watch from the uh, like. I was like, "I'm in my world. I don't want to see how everybody else is trying to get through this. I'm just trying to get through this without crying. I don't want to see other people crying." Well, I, honestly, days like that. I am someone who is much better when I'm busy. If I don't have time to think too hard about what's going wrong, that's very good for my mental health. And so that was was a really good thing that, yes, it was completely insane. And I basically had a newborn in a business that I had to run outside of my house and drop. We would literally drop bins of stuff because it was all mass kits at the time. We would drop bins of stuff that I had cut up to be folded into mass kits. And we would like videotape how we would like them folded. So that way our team could look at them and put it on Dropbox. And then we would drop these bins off at everybody's doorsteps and pick them up a day or so later whenever they were done. And like Mary. That's literally how you did that? That's literally how we did that. I would cut and then we would drop off, you know, tubs of, of material at people's doorsteps. And... They would fold them, we would and package them and we'd pick it up later. And then Mary, my neighbor, she was not working for us at the time, but she um she has a bunch of jobs, but one of them is like doing contracts for a real estate agent. So that all came to a complete halt. So she was bored. And I was we were like, would you like to label stuff for us? So that's kind of how her shipping journey began. And my dog is ripping everything apart. Remy, stop it. And <laughs> and you so Adam would 
Adam would like run everything through the printing software and then we would drop it off on Mary's doorstep and she would label it and put tape over it so it didn't get messed up. And then Adam would come back and get it when it was ready. And it was, it was so crazy. How did, this get, how did this get to Stephanie Brennan then? Okay. So you can say that part. <laughs> so um, now I'm like in this story. I'm, I'm we were uh, still very distant at that point. I think when you came along, but I think yeah, you were, I was still a heavy buyer. Yeah. <laughs> you were. You were. I had just moved locally. I had moved within two or so hours. Yeah. As opposed to the four to five hours I was before. <laughs> so I started. So I went. I went shopping at Quilt Addicts in Mar. It was in March of 2020. It's so like right before everything hit the fan. Um, I started working there in October of 21. Yeah. Um. So yeah, by that point, so we were mostly by that point to kind of show where how we had evolved at that point. Um, we had leased a second thousand square feet office space and the second space that we leased, it was connected by a doorway. And so at that point, we were cutting everything and only my family because it was still all my family all together all the time at that point um, would be on the first thousand square foot space and then the other one that was connected by a doorway had what was it four or five offices in it and so everyone had their own workspace we had hand sanitizer sanitizer up the wazoo cleaning protocols like um air filters and i think at that point we were were we still doing it where there was only one person in at a time and no, there were half hour um... shifts in between no, we hadn't, we, we hadn't been doing that. Okay. For a while we did we, that. We still worked separately and we still yeah. masked, but we were in, we were in there together. Yeah. But everyone had like a space where they could like shut the door. Yes. And so that was yeah. really, really nice. And we had these air, air filters going all the time, but back to you. So this is yeah. what at Quilt Addicts Anonymous looked like at that point. That, that gives me it. some perspective and yes. maybe others too. Yeah. Like where, where this yeah, connection that, happens. Yeah. Um, and I, I worked there. I, I reached out because my husband worked for John Deere. He still works for John Deere and he was on strike. And I was like, mm, we need money. <laughs> um, and I emailed the customer service line really just on a whim. Like I, like I knew that I wanted to work there, but I, I did not have high expectations. <laughs> and so when Sage emailed me back saying, Hey, we are hiring actually. I was like, Oh my gosh. Um, so hi, Angela. Hi, you want to say hi. You cannot. Hi. You are grounded from phone. Uh, Sorry. I need a story. Don't hit your sister and I with a baseball bat, and then we can talk about a story. I did not hit her in the eye. In the head. Oh. You did, in fact, hit her in it's the okay. head. It's okay. Okay. <laughs> Good night. I love you. We Aww. know you didn't purposely hit her. <laughs> we still need to learn a lesson from it. My in-laws are sleeping upstairs in the uh She literally room, walked up to it. As I was swinging. Go to bed. I love you. No phone for a little while. <laughs> <laughs> she literally walked her head into it. I don't know what her problem was. I mean, literally a lily problem. We didn't. It's not like we didn't tell her three or four times <laughs> to be aware of where her sister was. Like, don't she's swinging the bat. Walk your head into it. Yeah. Okay. I feel like I have that same conversation with Joanna Grace. It's like you. You're not. You're not a bulldozer. Like, you need to watch. You need to be aware of your surroundings. <laughs> oh, no. Or you are a bulldozer, and that's why you need to be aware yeah. of your surroundings. Yeah, true. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, so, like, in that year and a half, I went from having a, 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 a retail shop to completely online. Yeah. And then pretty soon after I was there, we announced that we were not going to open the physical store back up again. Oh, well, I uh, knew that all along, but people kept asking. Yeah. And so he finally had to make really it surprised. official. But. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't think anyone was really surprised. I know I wasn't. No. That brick well, and mortar. it's not like you're outside of a real city or anything. I mean, it's the Quad Cities. Yeah. It's, it's uh, all the brick and mortar ever did was break even. And what we realized when we didn't have to spend all the time making it run 
is that when we took that time and put it into online, we were able to grow pretty significantly. So, mm -hmm. but Stephanie is the only person who got hired without knowing somebody who already worked at Quilt Maddox Anonymous. This is true. I'm, yes. I'm the only who hire. You are. That Whoa. was ever hired? Ah. Uh, what's who hired? We'll go with ever. Well, I mean, everybody got hired, obviously, <laughs> but... You know, only, usually it's, it's like I knew high. them or like I knew Susie and Susie knew Jean and, yeah. you know, somebody knew somebody and that's how it came in. But. It's but yeah. pretty but awesome. It, it, yeah, it worked out. It worked out great. Um, I started off doing fulfillment and then did customer service and then did the, the garment line. And it was. It was it was a lot of fun. And it's and, and since then, like I've still been doing a lot of like my, my passion for, for sewing, not only quilts, but sewing clothes and accessories has, has continued to be there. So I was really afraid that this is just going to be a phase and cause yeah. you know, ADHD right. never well, you have made some things. really awesome dresses that were like custom fit to you. You made some really awesome dresses. You made your Easter dresses, mm -hmm. you made a Christmas dress. And mm -hmm. the custom fit. We'd to love you. to see some of it if you have any down there, or um, any I photos or pictures. things like that. Here, let me. Yeah. I'm going to enable we share some screen, of your dresses, and then you can share um, them on. If you have them on your computer, you can share them that way. Um, I can. Otherwise, you can hold computer. your phone. Up. Yeah, my phone might be easier. That's fine, too. That's fine too. We can always get a link to your socials and stuff too, and. Yes, absolutely. Want, and what is you can add that stuff? I, up. I know your stuff. I have to locate. We know where to find you. I do. <laughs> so here's, and she made her girls' Easter dresses too. Yes. So this is this year's Easter dress, both mine and both of my girls. Oh, I need it's to change so my screen, and it's all the way over there. <laughs> <laughs> I also made my husband a um a vest. Which there's not a picture of him wearing it without his jacket over it, so you can't really see it all that well. I would like to okay. say that I have fabric for matching Easter dresses for um, my girls. I did not even for next year. I did not even cut it. <laughs> it was just. It was just. A, it was just a year. And yes, Tiffany, you do need to go watch the garment videos. I particularly enjoyed the one where we did on how to measure because that has always been my challenge where like, because different parts of my body are different sizes. And so to figure out how to work with that is like a challenge for me. I can do it for my girls. Like Angela is very slim. And so I've learned how to alter that way, but you still aren't working with as many alterations because she's still I mean she hasn't hit Peter yet we're not dealing with that many curves I heard I think it was Christian Seriano that was like he likes designing for the female form because it's such a unique form every single time it's like you know you're dealing with a completely different sculpture and that really is how dressing a female is it's like you're dealing with a yeah. lot more than just a little yeah a little hanger you know yeah like there's so, there's so many variations and like you can have you know three women that supposedly wear the same size and stand them next to each other and their their bodies are completely different like our bodies are not made for for mass production and fast fashion and so no. it's in patterns honestly like the sizing on patterns is not a whole lot better it's no, if you want to feel terrible about yourself, go ahead and find a size of your pattern and, you know, make it. Yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. Oh, goodness. Like with, with on the rack closing, clothing, like there's vanity sizing. And so every couple of years, the sizing will change usually to help you. Yes. Whoops. <laughs> make on. you feel better. Yeah. Yeah. Like you'll like a size Five vintage clothes this year is going to be bigger than a size six from 10 years ago. And with patterns, at, at least with patterns from, from the big three companies, so like Simplicity, McCall's, Vogue, Butterick, like things like that, their measurements really have not changed since like, oh gosh, 
I mean, decades. I don't want to give a number, but it, I mean, it's been decades it's where they're really, they have something. added sizing. Um, but like a size six on a McCall's pattern that you get now is going to be about the same as a size six from 40 years ago. And it's not the same size six that's on the rack. No, not at all. I, I'm not a particularly large person and I've lost some weight and I would still be like a 12 or a 14 in, in dress sizing there, but I would probably be more like a six or an eight in common fashion sizing. One yeah. time like, when I was an actual size four, I went to make a size four for the patterns. That that did not oh. fit <laughs> at all. I had no. no idea that it wasn't the same. This is like in my, I can do it because I saw it on Project One Race stage. <laughs> <laughs> I can't well, tell yeah, you. I had an I could do it because it was on Project Runway stage. I, uh, I definitely people, did. People like, they have no idea that there's there's really no correlation in sizing for ready-made clothes and patterns because like that's not something that is really talked about like even with the even with pe more people sewing like it's still something that's really not talked about a whole lot so knowing how to measure your body and making like minor adjustments so that the so that a top can fit your bust and fit your waist the way you want it to um because i mean minor adjustments like that is is really not that difficult um but it is a skill that still needs to be learned yeah or like I, we, we've talked multiple times about my very silly TikTok where I sewed the pants the wrong way. Um, and I sewed, <laughs> I love that. I sewed know. the pants as the crotch. They still have, maybe I'll pick that seam at some point tonight. But um, maybe you should just wear the pants. I'm not going to wear the pants like that. I'm going to fix the damn pants because I have trees that are upside down on it. And I really like these pants. They're oh, teal. okay. So it's a directional pattern. That it is a directional sense, pattern. They're teal. It's like my favorite colors. I need these pants to be functional. <laughs> but anyway, so like I am so short. And right now my waist is, is the waist measurement for the XL size. My legs are not the size for the XL size. Nowhere near in terms of the length. So there's like a part on each one of those where it says length or short in here. And so I was able to do that. And I use pattern paper. Um, it's called Swiss tracing paper to basically create my own custom pattern. It's way more sturdy than what you are going to find as like the tissue that comes out. And you could sew with it um, to test it out. But I typically just keep it as like a sturdier version of my pattern. And if you're someone who changes sizes sometimes or like with my kids where I really like a pattern and I want to make it in two different sizes, I will trace out the size that I need. And in Angela's case, make adjustments to it if I want it to be something that's just for her. Um, and then we're able to, I'm able to make all those adjustments there. And then it usually fits when I bring it out and everything is good to go but um but yeah you have to know like paper. where are you going to mess with it yeah the Swedish tracing paper is is really awesome Bozo it's, makes one I that I think is better than the ones that we were able to get through our distributor but if you look for the Bozo um pattern paper or tracing paper that's the really good stuff that's what I prefer hmm. to have and I get a whole roll at a time because it goes fast when you're tracing off multiples, but then like I bought it from a Wawak, yeah, and that's it's the same. It's the, the dimensions are different, but it's the same, yeah, substance that what we had, and I, I I use that stuff like crazy. Yeah, it's it's so awesome, especially like if you've got a kid, you know, and you might want to make the pattern again later. Mm -hmm. You can trace it off, and then you still have your original that you can trace off in a different size another year. So yeah. That's really, I think that's really nice. Mm -hmm. I usually, so I don't make a ton of garments. So if I make like stuffed animals, which I seem to make a lot more than I want to, um, I actually straight up copy all those patterns right off the bat because I know that my kids are going to grab the pattern and run away with it because they want to look at the pictures. So I copy everything for myself anyways to make sure that I can print it off again. Mm -hmm. And then I just print those pages because they'll have they'll have smaller pages for that and I just print those on the cardstock and then I trace those yeah for anything that I use but 
for clothing, I always wondered how that kind of works because I usually just say, well, head into the pattern. Yeah, here you is, know. I'll be pulling out. I got some. Or I'll use that like paper that you would use for your kids, like you roll across the entire table. Yeah. It's not the ideal product for that, but. So like this is not an knowing example. the right product. Um, this one I marked on it. So we've got simplicity. I put the pattern name, what piece it is and okay. like cut to and what size. So this one is 10 to 12. I also have one that's a size four for Lily. And then I can make all my pattern markings on here as well. Um, so like this is for shorts. This is for, um, like a little bit longer short. And then we have the long pant here. And then here's our lengthen and shorten line um, if you need to make it bigger or smaller. And this stuff is really sturdy. You really, can, I mean, I suppose you could tear it, but it's not very easily. Um, does it feel like a dryer sheet? That's kind of what it looks like. It does feel not kind of like a dryer it, sheet. But like a color catcher. Yeah, kind of. I mean, it's not like, it doesn't have like any texture to it. It doesn't feel weird. Um, but then my goal here is to one finish the first batch of flipping flannel pajama pants that I started. Do it now. No, it's a surgery. It's loud. But anyway, at some point I will do the pajama pants. My my goal, why you have such a mess in here today. It's very bad. But um I would like to do that. But then I want to do like pajama pants every year from the same pattern for my kids so we can have matching pajama pants on Christmas. And I think oh. that would be awesome. And like make some for my husband too. And because one year I did that and like I just bought them and it was so uncomfortable because I bought like the really large size, but I think I hit, had had a baby recently. And so it was like really uncomfortable in the waistband. And then they were also way oh. too long. And I, but this way I could make them and they fit. And so well, that's true. I feel like that's a really good like starting point because you can learn how to make a pant. And if it doesn't work, you're out like, you know, maybe $20, 30 depending on if you got it on sale for flannel. And well, that's a good it's point. Just a cozy too. The thing. first time you make it, the first time you make it, you don't buy the good stuff. No, you get that. You get the fabric that you got on sale for X amount of yard that you weren't that thrilled with to begin with. Yeah, I got this for that. like two ninety nine a yard on sale. So. And then when you make the pants and you hate them, you just cut it back into squares and you hide it in a quilt for somebody you sort of like. Yeah, I a hundred percent am gonna cut down <laughs> my scrap for this one. I such a disaster in here right now. And it's all due to this whole, I, Stephanie's going to make the flannel pajama pants plan that has not come to fruition. <laughs> like, I literally, I have, look at my long arm. That is all bits of flannel that need to become pajama pants that I haven't even cut yet. <laughs> it's just a mess. You're really ahead. No, for next Christmas. I was supposed to be Christmas. for last Christmas. <laughs> Oh God! Last Christmas, I cut the pattern. Quilt was very in next July. Day, I gave up. Thankfully, yeah. I did the ten. I did the size up for the kids so that it would fit the next year. But this is what and we need to do for know. Quiltmas in July. July here, I need to do <laughs> those. Oh uh, yeah, we're and we're going big on that this year because we did it for ourselves last year and it was hilarious. It was, and hopefully, funny. we get to go somewhere and hide. I don't know because that, that I'm going to finagle that. I don't know either. We might actually just have to bring the children. It'll be a nightmare, but you know, we'll try. You know, it's something. You can just come hide in my basement. We'll that, see what happens. That works. <laughs> or maybe the children can entertain each other. Maybe. maybe. Send the husbands to keep them entertained. They won't have yeah. anything to do with this. You put two husbands together that, and it might not. No. Nobody is going to be babysat. My husband is oh, very like introverted Maybe. he had fun at your house but he also well, was like he had to talk to people oh no it's so yes. hard oh. well, <laughs> so knows. john is not 
incredibly introverted, but he's, you know, they're guys. They're not like, hey, you want to be my friend? Yeah, you want to be friends? You want to talk about Bluey and Tula? Yeah, absolutely. Let's do this all day. This is like when I sew every single night together on every Friday for the rest of our lives. Yeah. They're like, hey, dude. Hey, bro. It's like King of the Hill where they're just standing there grunting at each other. Uh, Oh. This is kind of uh-huh. like the time that I came home from a coffee shop and I was texting with someone that I'd met as an artist who I think needs to be a free spirit fabric designer. And Where is this person? She needs to be on here. Can we get an right? update on her? How, how'd that go? I need to follow up with her. But I was looking through my text messages and I realized I hadn't done that. But so, but we were like texting each other all night long. Nad's like, why are you doing this? You're going to be hanging out with Chantel. And I'm like, this is not Chantel. And he is like, what's what is this and i was like i made a friend at the coffee mom. shop and he's just like what <laughs> like it, it did not even like cross his mind that this is a possibility that you can like literally meet someone and make a new friend as an adult that you want to text later like <laughs> at a coffee shop where you're not supposed to talk to people on purpose <laughs> but anyway i gotta plug in my computer i'm gonna hide from it. well we have segued all over the place, which is what we are so very good at. We should probably open this up for everybody. If you have questions about garmentry or whatever, we're keeping Stephanie Brennan here all freaking night because that's what we like to do. We I have them here for a half hour and then we keep them actually here all night. So <laughs> well, the last, I, I think you do not I've have to stay on, until midnight. I've watched three of your Friday night online sewing groups and yeah. i've been on until the end all of, with all of them so i made it to the end on all of them <laughs> i don't I, know that i, I can go as long to. tonight because i've been i taught all day but we'll see that's, that's understanding and i do need and a lecture tomorrow who but. else here has been here i think gwendolyn's been with us every single time and then who my else mother-in-law has my mother-in-law made an appearance yet i haven't seen her she, she's in Michigan this we weekend, didn't so post it anywhere this week so that's probably on us it was yeah we well yeah after everybody fell down the stairs and got hit by bats in stephanie's house it was yeah, kind of stephanie's uh, had a week and she's the keeper of the interweb stuff here we're gonna train the you. comedic effect <laughs> you're, you're gonna get trained i'm gonna get trained yeah. yes Oh, maybe, I can figure it out. If maybe I you can figure it, out. Somebody has to figure out their passwords. <laughs> Dude, this is true. Chantel needs access to the Adobe Creative Suite. I mean, I took Adobe stuff in college. Actually, doing so I did anthropology, sociology, all that stuff, women and gender studies. But then I went to design school afterwards. Kind of like a change of major there. And... um yeah, I kind of left the field too because I I don't know, the the atmosphere wasn't what I wanted to deal with in the long term. We were talking about this. I guess it kind of gave me the bad taste too. And it wasn't so much about the globalization of it all. But um it's funny how quilting has a way of bringing in people because it's a nice find community there are where we can eggs. all somehow interact and, and deal with our it's like therapy somehow yeah, i'm not really, really sure is. how but it it really is there's something so calming about just feeding squares through here i can't do anything calming except for feed squares apparently <laughs> well i a couple of years ago i learned um I, see, I struggle with seasonal depression pretty bad and like I Ooh. learned how to knit watching YouTube videos and like there is something like there's evidence to show that like those small repetitive movements are really really good for your mental health and like quilting and, and sewing in general is is very very similar like you're working with your hands and then you there's a tangible result when you're done with it like even if it turns out terrible, yeah. like it's still something. Like it's still something that you did. It's an activity that you did. It's something that you learned. And so, it's just yeah. When I was pregnant with Lily, that. before I was on anxiety meds, and I had just started like talk therapy, I knitted nonstop. 
because that just is what kept me level and sane. And mm-hmm. that's, I needed that. I needed to sit down with a book at the end of the night, an audiobook, and just sit in my bed and knit for a little bit. And that was how I wound down and kept myself from like losing my damn mind. So, yeah. I believe it. <laughs> I, uh, I actually surprisingly somehow had become like the hand sewing queen and uh, which is shocking to basically anybody who knows me. They're like, wait, you sit still and do the same thing for X amount of time. Like, tell me, how does this work? Um, But yeah, there is something about that. Clearly it is my therapy, but I wanted to show you guys what I made. It's the most millennial sewing kit you'll ever see in your life. It's awesome. She was it, telling it me about awesome. this earlier. It's my caboodle. Oh, nice. Yes. And How fun is wait that? for it. I have like a little thing for like, is it gonna let me show it? For my spool of thread <gasps> and my needle minder. Oh, that's and all awesome. my little pieces. I know, right? That is brilliant. I love it. I like I'm it. like, this is, this is what my, this is how my caboodle graduates as I stop wearing makeup and I start hand sewing. <laughs> so in case you were concerned that the things you learned in your childhood won't be relevant anymore, you're wrong. Caboodles are still the coolest. I bought one for Angela and she didn't understand why I was so excited about it. And now she knows. <laughs> because. Caboodle. Lily will often. It's, she has her own the play whole makeup. Kit and caboodle. It is. She has her own play makeup now, and oh, she cute. regularly puts it on regularly. And I had this makeup table that I'd gotten for the shop, but never put together. We put it together in their room. It's got like lights going all around it and stuff. And the I see Lily just sitting in there going. It's so That's funny. Great. And then they sit up there and they brush their hair. It's so cute. It's so adorable. <laughs> Not that their room doesn't get trashed constantly. Kim loves the That's idea okay. of your caboodle. Room. She's wondering where hers oh, is. My daughters if decided you... to put on makeup today, but the makeup that they put on was your fortunately non toxic like watercolor paints. Ah. That's they came something. upstairs and their faces are just covered. I'm just like, oh my goodness. We had an incident recently where my daughter Penny decided to um, grab her diaper while I was changing her, and she's two, and she very much hates getting icky and dirty, and it was an icky, dirty diaper, and so she accidentally gave herself a full hair mask. Oh, my God. Oh, no. That's all. It was like a Dawn dish soap in the hair kind of situation. Oh, so no. be thankful that it's, you know, watercolors or acrylic or makeup because that was, and John was on call. He wasn't here. <laughs> yeah, that's he wasn't awful. here. Of course he wasn't here. <laughs> oh, good. Of course gracious. he wasn't here. <laughs> oh my God. It was the worst. Well, Hazel, when she was little, she managed to put like half a bottle of that, like, that creamy Vaseline. It's not really the lotion and it's not Vaseline. It's like in between in her hair. Oh no. She oh, just goodness. like squirted it in her hair and rubbed it all around. And that was like trying to clean the oil out of the the penguin kind of situation. Getting all of that out of her hair. We have craft I think every kits. kid has a moment where they uh oh yeah for sure take the liberties of decorating themselves. So we had craft kits down here in the basement and I had some Easter egg dye things and I didn't realize that it wasn't like the, you know, the paths of old where you just put the little tablet in. This was like some sort of like liquid dye thing. And Lily came upstairs and she's covered in blue, just her hair, her hands, her face. And I'm like, did you get marker on yourself? And she's like, yeah. So I get her in the, the tub she's really upset and you know i get off as much as i can but she still looks bruised and she still has like <laughs> she looks bruised uh, yeah she looked bruised because it was that makes blue sense. and she still i couldn't get it all the way off of her face 
and saw an email to the teacher explaining what's going on here. And like her hair, her hair was also matching the same shade. So it's like, okay, uh, clearly there's evidence that Stephanie's telling the truth here. And so a couple of days later, I go downstairs. I realize she's gotten into this Easter egg kit and it's everywhere. There's blue crap every, and it's dying. Oh, like this is not coming oh, out. No. And I'm like, oh, oh well, <laughs> it's what it is. But Penny colored her feet and hands purple this week. Um, was it washable? I just found the marker today. I've been looking for this marker for like three days. <laughs> and I swear to you, I am not a bad mother, but she has not had like the full treatment bath since then. And it is just now wearing off of her feet. I've been trying to like wash it off in the sink. Yeah. Like, I think that kid needs like a full soak. I found it colored all over our flooring. Oh no. In a corner of the house today. Oh. Was it at least washable? By where the or? marker was. I don't know. So when, when my I daughter walked was... away. <laughs> <laughs> and when my did daughter... not hurt anybody or anything. I walked away. <laughs> you should have Chanel. When my daughter was young, because she's an adult now, but she was staying with my mom and um for a weekend. My husband and I had went out of town. And I get this picture that my mom sends me. And she had gotten into her makeup and she had the red lipstick and had just drawn all over her face with red lipstick and a magic marker, one of the um, permanent magic black markers. And I was like, what in the world? And she goes, yeah, I had went out to the kitchen to do something. When I walked back in the bedroom, you know, um, her face was just covered in this. And we were like, why would, you know, why would you do this and stuff? Well, they had went to the Apple Butter Fest and she had gotten one of those little like designs on her cheek, oh, but so it she had was washed off with the bath. So the next day she thought she was going to give herself a design <laughs> on her face. Yeah. It didn't come off for like two weeks. It was miserable. <laughs> oh goodness. Were you also explaining to teachers what was up? <laughs> like every time my daughters get a haircut, well, they themselves a haircut two or three days later. Thankfully, she was only four, so she wasn't in school yet because she was only four. Yeah. So yeah, thankfully, thank I God, didn't have right? to explain it to teachers. Yeah, I just had to explain it to like neighbors, you know. <laughs> like I don't do this to her; she does it to herself. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I had to explain <laughs> the baseball bat incident. Oh yeah, that was not fun. Well, you even I was like, I'm gonna have John call you so that you understand, like. <laughs> It's going to be okay. I was like. This many kids in the ER in one week is usually a bad sign. I was like. But you're okay. I was just like, <laughs> at what point does DCFS become concerned? Is, like, my kids my are just thing. really clumsy. One kid I is really know. clumsy. <laughs> oh, my God. I played Bob and Chicken and I lost, guys. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's all right. Now I'm cleaning the machine because it is a fluff ball. I from all these squares I'm filling. Do not know. Yeah, I just finished that. Where Ugh. my other five of this one is, which is not good. My sister's gonna be uh -oh. very unhappy with me. You're still working on those for your sister, huh? Oh my god. I guess yes. that makes sense. You didn't work on them in the ER. I mean, I brought my contain I brought this with. And I thought I had packed the rest of these, but it's somewhere in my house, not in the bag it's supposed to be. And oh. I know they didn't get brought to the ER because I got there and I was like, well, crap. <laughs> now I can't have anything to do and my kids are going to want my cell phone the whole time. So. You did get to look at Liberty of London for a little bit. I did. I was sending you lots of pictures of Liberty of London. That was, yeah, I it think, was really second. dangerous, though, because then I ended up in such wormholes from that I'm for sorry. hours. <laughs> okay, so, like, what's the, I keep hearing about Liberty of London, but maybe I'm a bad quilter because I don't know what the hype is. Like, what's the big deal with Liberty of London? It's just, it's really expensive quilting fabric is what it is. Okay. <laughs> but it's, it's got this, like, unique style to it. It's very traditional floral yeah. that you would commonly see in like little girls Easter dresses and um, tradition. Here I have. And I they, have they do have other substrates. It's not just quilting. They do. 
Um, yeah, well, the, the mainly it's the, the lawn and the, additional to the designs, the fact that it's the lawn cotton, which is super, super wonderful to work with for garments yeah. and stuff. And so it's very popular for that. And I think that um, they... Uh, I think they did all of this in Liberty. If I Can you see that? Yeah. And yeah. it has like a very distinctive kind of overly floral... Okay. Look. And so, yeah, for English paper piecing, it's... It's great. Well, it, and it has a lot of hidden patterns in it that you can yeah, play it, with. We're I think hoping some of the UK people some that were, like, doing things, they did, they kind of spotlighted it a few years ago, and then it, it just kind of snowballed through the quilting community and stuff, and has kind of gotten to be kind of big, you know, because of the uniqueness of their style and the fact that they have that light lawn. Um, but they also have quilting cotton. They just don't have as much variety. I had a long conversation with the gal because I'm looking for a particular print um, at QuiltCon at the booth. And she said that really their uh, quilting cotton is a very small, small percentage of the fabric that they sell, that it's almost oh, yeah. all the lawn. Hmm. Okay. That and their store. You have to look up the appearance of their store in London. It's you like half of the the thing you're excited about. Like, oh, really? yeah. Okay. It is the world's most beautiful fabric store. So we're going to hit the fabric district first because apparently they have clearance liberty of London over there. So we're going to do that like first. And then we're going to go to... um the actual Liberty of London, which is right by Cupcake Gemma, which is our Angela and I's favorite baking YouTuber. <laughs> so she's got uh, a new book. I've trained anybody mom. here have a, a Bernina that always gets a little hairball in it. I do you not have a Bernina. The machine is a cat. It is. It farts, it has hairballs. <laughs> you know. <laughs> She's actually Queen Elizabeth the Third, if you needed to know. But yes, that's Steph that's the perfect cat name. I mean, really. <laughs> yeah. I'm also Stephanie, obsessed with everybody's cats that are on here. So clearly, yes, you're right. My machine is a cat. Cat, a definite cat. Wow. Um, Stephanie B, what kind of machine did you get? I didn't hear you. I heard you um, talk. I was in and out and trying to get ready because my grand had just left. So I was. Um, uh, quickly getting myself set up, but you had said that um, you're you got a new machine. What was your new machine that you got to replace your old singer that you got it at Walmart? Well, see, the machine that I have now is a it's still an entry level machine. It's a Burnett B thirty three. Oh, mm -hmm. but it's a Burnett, and yes, they are made Burnett. by Bernina. Yes, made by made by Bernina. Um, but even though this is still like very, I mean, it doesn't really have your bells and whistles. It's it's in, like it was a two hundred dollar machine. Um, it's leaps and bounds better than the brother that I had. The Burnett's. This was a couple of years ago. Bernina was trying to get me to be a dealer, and I was like, uh, "No, you have a, like a it's like a forty or fifty thousand dollar buy in in order to oh, do gosh. it." And I was oh, like, oh. "Like, no, no, thank you." Um, but and then you have to learn how to service the things. But anyway, so at the time I learned about the Burnett's, it is like the only machine in like the four or $500 price point that has a automatic thread cutter. The only one. Really? Like everything else, you've got to spend like at least $1,700 to get that technology, which is awesome when you have it. But... Yeah, when I was filming, I got kind of spoiled with that, with the automatic thread cutter. Oh, yes. That machine, I I'm, need to I'm take it I'm working on a quilt top right now, and every time. I know. I have I have many of those. <laughs> I've got them all <laughs> over the place right now. But I feel spoiled because I have this beautiful machine, and then I think, oh, I could handle it if I didn't have it, but then I forget to, like, raise my presser foot because it does it for me. <laughs> Yeah, like, you're okay, spoiled. maybe I don't know how to sew anymore. I don't know. You do. <laughs> it's a machine. Sorry, I gotta to find the sewing it. machine oil, so I had to walk away. But yeah, I I I get spoiled by the fact that it even like it raises my foot so I can feed the next thing in. 
and I think I would be fine, but I'm pretty sure on our like little retreat thing we did. You brought like, something first, else, right? I brought a smaller Bernina and it didn't have the automatic like foot lift every time you go to like piece another thing in there. And so you had to get reused have, to it. You have to go do, 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 do with your, with your hand. I it's know, okay. Right. Shocking. Do you have have the, problems. Do you have the knee um, thing? Chantel? I do. And I, I didn't bring it was my problem there, but it was like, oh my gosh, I just, you don't realize how spoiled you are until you, uh, even to, that though, like if you're not at an ergonomic setting, that knee lift is a pain in the butt. Oh, and yeah, I have to admit as a short person, I already have to put, I have like boxes under all of my, my like feet so that I can actually reach my pedals. <laughs> I so really the, do. I had to put like step it. stools under for my daughter. That worked out yeah. pretty well. I work as an yeah, at a local dry cleaners, and the the primary machine that I use there is a, is an industrial Juki straight stitch machine. Um, mm. If you if you ever watch um, Jordan Fabrics, Donna Jordan, and the the tutorials that she does, it's the same kind of machine that she has. But that has a knee lift on it, and I th- I didn't think that I was going to use it very much, but oh my gosh, like I use that puppy all the time, and I'm like, Once okay, you get used to it. My next machine, I need this. I found you that juki, but not in time. Yeah, I know. I wish I forgot found that one before I found the uh, the Viking. Did you end up getting that one then? I did. Is that the one that you messaged all of us about? I did. Yeah. We still have the work group chat going, even though we haven't obviously been working together for a while. <laughs> but usually, when we finish projects, somebody will post a like, "Look what I just did." Or late, lately, Aww. I was like, I have more sea potatoes than I need. Does anybody want them? Okay, so, so when are you going to uh, post the, um, the one guy, the new guy that you hired, and you were working on a quilt. He was doing his first quilt and stuff. When, it, when is he going to do that? Uh, I don't think he ever quilted that one. Yeah, we got to we gotta follow up on that, though. Yeah, actually, I do. I like, need to follow up with Bobby. I need... I feel bad. I need to quote something for him. And then I feel like I can talk to him again, but I feel like I can't talk to him until I get off. My well, he was, head. it was supposed to be like his first when yeah. he was learning and everything. And you guys just started it out. I was curious to see how he did with that. Yeah. He hung out in my basement for a while when we both were like, what are we doing with our lives afterwards? Yeah. And like, he would come. So once a week and <laughs> I would do whatever it was that I needed to do. And, but yeah, that was fun. I know the quilt top because he he did um yeah, the top about, is done. Was, yeah, and he still has a machine. Really cute. Yeah, he's got a machine still, so technically he could do it on his own if he wanted to. But yeah, I mean so, he's got yeah, so. he's got no kids. Mm-hmm. He certainly could find some time to work on it. I mean, that's true. He could just do straight line quilting on it. He doesn't yeah. need to do free motion. Anything well, fancy. sometimes people that don't have kids don't realize that they have some time. That is accurate. I didn't realize I had time until I had kids and it was like, oh my God. Where did my time go? What did I do? I could have used this. I had I no idea. None. <sighs> Chantel, you'll appreciate this. Um, so I was switching projects and when I was setting up, you know, I decided to, you know, do what you're doing, cleaning, oiling, all of that, my machine and switching out my thread to the new stuff. And yeah, so I just got finished and I'm sewing along, right? And I pull out everything I just sewed and none of the stitch, all the stitches pulled out. I forgot to thread my needle. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, it looked like you probably was sewing because it's poking holes. Exactly. I feel that. And, and yeah. it actually grabbed the the thread, the um, bobbin thread, but yeah, so... I've done, that. I've done that. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. Although my bobbin chicken wasn't though. too bad. At least this machine tells me for the most part, although sometimes it false alarms me and so I just keep telling it to be quiet and then eventually it really is serious. And then, <laughs> Yeah. And then, you know, I've sewed like half a quilt at that point. There's a uh, what I hate is when it's like the flying geese and it's the point where you're like, it looks like a heart and you're putting your last square on and you, then you're yep. off 
because then you just have all this randomness all over the place. It's like, <sighs> you're like, what was I doing? I, uh, actually now I'm wondering where was I? I was somewhere in this chain. Here we go. <laughs> you know, I really miss having like actual in-person quote retreats. I used to go twice a year before I had kids and it was great. Like you would just take a day off of work or two and just go out there and you just get to basically have this for like four days straight and everybody cooks a decent meal and but you only have to do one meal and uh, so the rest of the time you can just sew and I would always get so much done there but now I, I almost to didn't arrange machine, everything by the way you what <laughs> I almost did exactly what she said. Yeah. Like I didn't thread my machine. <laughs> you guys are. I was listening problems. to your lovely story, and I was daydreaming about it's like contagious. where where we're gonna go. I know, all the right? Cool things we're all gonna do in person one day, guys. And I almost didn't thread my older. machine. <laughs> yeah, and all I could think of is you only have time when you're retired or before you have kids, and I'm not close to either. Well, I don't. I was with a lot of folks who are retired today and they were like, you know, there are just too many people who are like, I'm going to wait to do X, Y, Z until I'm retired. And then they do. And then somebody has a health problem and they're not oh, able true. to do yeah. it or, you know, some, just something else ends up coming up. So I absolutely want to do more things in person. But the way Adam's schedule is right now, it's just like, it's got to be like a Sunday, Monday. Like that's when I can go do things and not have to worry about who's going to get my kids or do I need to beg an in-law to come help out? Yeah. I also think that millennials are not going to retire. I mean, that would be sad. No. I want to retire. It's a pipe dream. Yeah, I know. It really is. I wish everybody else could see that from the outside and stop saying that that was poor planning, but the amount of belief that was pushed on us that we had to take loans in order to get successful jobs meant that we all started like 50 to a hundred thousand dollars down, which would have been your house. Yeah. Yeah. You know, back then, but because we all had that in education and we came into a recession immediately and now um, we're on our second. <laughs> I graduated in 2009. Is like, it our second or our third? Yeah. I feel like it it's is, our third and they're just not know. calling it one. I, th I think it's our third. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. It's been a little rough. Yeah. I it was 2008. So that was 2007. It was. It went into a um, dying industry. Yeah. Um, there's a scene in in uh the office where pam is finishing up her art school in new york and she's like i basically have to start over because everything's going digital oh and my god yes yeah i can tell you can probably relate to this i felt oh, yes. in my soul because like i learned how to draft patterns by hand i learned how to grade them by hand i learned how to trace everything by hand and nothing on the computer and everything now is done on the computer and there are like free programs that you can get online that will grade everything for you it's like this was an entire semester class for me that i drew i know me, and i have no idea how to use them. i had hand drafting and stuff before we did cad but then i didn't get classes in revit which is the common software out you know that is often used in architectural yeah. work now and uh, honestly i don't mind working in a design related field by any means. But I don't know if I could go back to um, working in the field. Yeah. And in, in the very direct field of I am an interior designer for a firm, whatever. And, you know, it was a lot of hustling in Chicago working at architectural firms. It was not. I can see it's that. Not easy. I'm sure. And it was like a put off your, you know, having your kids kind of job. It was not unlike John being in medical school. It was like the people who were going to make it were going to put the time in and have your kids when you're 35. 
Yeah. Yeah. Or later. Oh, so there's the one. I played Bob and Chicken on. I found it. <laughs> so not only are we it. these, you know, house payment loans, we're also behind the eight ball technologically. I know. We well, have this it's really always a weird moving. moment. You always have to keep up with that. Like yeah. there's things that I'm learning now with social media that I am behind on a little bit because I have not like personally Zoom? done what yeah like zoom because i have not personally <laughs> done our social media posting in years and so there are things that i'm relearning and best practices have changed and so that's true uh, yeah you have to you have to be able to rotate with everything yeah, yeah. it's like we all thought maybe john was like the crazy one like going into medicine but man i mean seems to be like he did a pretty good job for himself now. He did. He did good. He did good. Although, I mean, some of that's all changing too. Everything always is rotating and changing. Mm -hmm. It's you going for now. It changes faster than it used to because of, you know, technology, internet, computers, all the things. Yeah. It does move a little faster. I, I like, feel like it's hard for me to catch up my breath. I feel like I'm on a merry-go-round that's just going faster and faster and faster all the time. And, oh yeah, you know, it's like, I just got, it was just Friday. How is it Friday again? <laughs> that's a hundred percent how I feel right now. Right. So I'm also incredibly blessed that we're doing this because it's like, it's forcing me to re mm -hmm. realize like it's been a week. I got to do something for me. It's been a week. Have you been downstairs? <laughs> Have you had a beverage in a week? <laughs> like, <laughs> relax, girl. You need a break. Taking time to make sure you get things done for you. That yes, is because important. getting things done isn't as effective when you're not fulfilled yourself. So even though this isn't necessarily much, it's been more than enough. It's almost like it's kind of you're accountable to the people that you're sewing with on it's, Friday night. Yeah. You know, you know, it's like in. you worked out. You went to the gym with a friend. Basically. I went to my gym with my friend. <laughs> <laughs> my goal is to actually clean this crap up and actually film a video this week. That is my goal. I actually cleaned up. It's not bad in here right Mine now. is horrible. <laughs> We had that's okay. We've been working on picking up our upstairs and decluttering because I'm gonna have like both my mother and mother in law helping out while we're gone, and um, my neighbor is gonna be helping out a little bit. And at some point, so there's gonna be a lot of people in our house that are not normal. You have the village coming, yes. And so, I want it to be like respectable when people arrive and not like. Stephanie respectable is a good way to put it what what yeah. have you done with yourself why can you not like put things <laughs> in any at least in the room they belong in <laughs> and so what I'm, happened to your basic hygiene <laughs> yeah I know like, the bathroom that's where I'm at I'm like I don't know if I want anybody to see like my shower right now I should probably sanitize that um it's we not did that so last bad night. I've seen worse we've done it last but, night so yeah but um yeah. So I'm like going through and doing all the things and, and mostly like when you have a lot of stuff and a small house, our best way to do it is to put things in bins that belong in a certain space. And then that bin goes to that space and is dealt with in that space. So we did not get as far as we wanted to on that before my mother-in-law came out today. And so this morning, Adam just dumped like three bins uh -oh. in my sewing room. I yep. was lucky I made it to the desk. And I'm just like, <laughs> oh my God, I relate. Oh well. I relate so hard. Oh that well. is like, yep. that is the ADHD problem of my life. I Did will put it in this very handy bin. And then I will take the bin to the space. And then I will unload the bin in the space. And it'll happen like that every time. What did I tell you today, Stephanie? I have a pile of bins sitting in my dining room, which is like not a hidden space by any means. That's starting to cover a window. This is not good. You know what I call those bins? Laundry baskets. Load bearing? But they're all... <laughs> <laughs> it's like a load bearing, so like I have a a load bearing clutter hole over there. I have a very important question for you, Chantel. 
the bin that you took with to our retreat last July. Oh, I got that unpacked finally. You did? Finally. That's very good. <laughs> last time I was out, it was still just sitting there ready to go. Yeah. But <laughs> here's the funny thing. So the projects that I'm still supposed to be working on are still very much in their package of which I tied them together. Oh, lovely. In July. It's June? okay. July. It was July. Yeah. Yeah. It's all right. This is a whiff right there. Yeah. Look at that <laughs> banana sateen. Oh, that is pretty I, good though. Oh, uh, can I make some banana pants? Maybe I want banana pants. You did just like base it already though. No, I think it's an extra that I wasn't basted. Well, there you go. I got banana the banana pants. You don't have to be very careful about the placement of those bananas. <laughs> it's like a Lularo <laughs> fail. <laughs> that can be like the worst fail. <laughs> yeah, you can completely avoid that by making a skirt. It could still land in a very unique area. I mean, there are some of these that are. I mean, it yeah. could, but it would be harder. It would be harder. I just stabbed under my cuticle with a needle. Ouch. Oh, you know, this is like a banana to not have at the front, for example. <laughs> <laughs> that, hmm. that is accurate. That is, that you is know, very accurate. maybe these are not pants bananas. <laughs> maybe, maybe these are throw pillow bananas. <laughs> that would totally work for you. Yeah. Yeah, it would. That would go with my stuff. If if you can imagine that going with somebody's decor. It would. For neon sure. green bananas would work for me. I mean, it's Tula. It's Tula. It is my decor. My essence. It is for sure. You need to meet her someday. Oh my God. I can't wait. And her humor is right on point with mine. I could live for that. I feel like we'd be but, besties. Oh. Whenever yeah. you meet she, Tula, she, she makes you feel like a best night. Week. Maybe once fun. we get our technology figured out, we can invite her. <laughs> the funny thing is, apparently, she's not so hot at the technology thing either. So I think she would relate. Yeah, probably. But yeah, anything that has her on it is going to be, you know, bananas. Watch a million times. I needed to make some more bananas and some Maybe more I free fall. It would be fun. I need more bananas. That was Monkey Wrench. So that would have been 2019. That one sold yes. so bad for us. It's <laughs> not fair. I know. I don't even think I got any from you guys. So it must have been like 2019 or Yeah, so. it was for like right before. It was pre-pandemic. I remember that. I think it was pregnant. Because I got out. some during the pandemic. Yeah. Maybe it was 2018. I'm still amazed that the Daydreamer line is still so available. I know. Well, that's because yeah. they did the tiny prints as a continuation of their two years. Um, so every two years, they put in their catalog what they're going to continue to produce. And well, so all the like sunshines and stuff. But yeah, you still find the birds. And butterflies. Yeah. I like, wonder if I think the... they produced a lot because they realized people were like all over it. Well, I wonder if the Queen of Diamonds has anything to um, do with it. The um, EPP block of the month, the Queen of Diamonds. Oh, that does have some of it in it. Yeah. It? So I, they might. I have... am not doing that, but I can't believe there's an EEP block of the month and I'm not when doing did, it. When did that yeah. one come out? I did it by accident. I didn't know it was EPP. Is, is that code for a friend? Do you want to buy my kit? No. Because, you know, <laughs> no, but it's checking. Be. It just be checking. Do you want to buy the kit so we can do it together? Well, yeah. Then, then, done. I think I have all of her English paper piecing and I think I'm like into all of them. Except for her new tumbling block one. I haven't started that. And then they don't they ask released, me to actually finish a kit, though. That's just too much. They released another one um, of the, a different line of fabrics that's the 
Halloween fabrics, but I don't remember what it's called. I don't think it's because uh, the wicker fabric line is the queen of ween, but it was something uh, Halloween. Kayla Luna, but, or what was the other one that she did that was Halloween? Yeah, yeah, but it's the same like pattern. They're just the Halloween fabrics instead of the multiple lines of fabrics that was in oh. the Queen of Diamonds. Well, I don't need any of the fabric, which is, well, I mean, I would be happy to have the fabric. <laughs> I but, didn't even need the fabric either, but yeah, for sure. I did order what I was missing for Tula Nova. So the Dino line is finally shipping, and I want to get my. It's hands shipping. Out. Look at this. I didn't pre-order it from anybody. <laughs> April, and like, I need it. I I want a fat quarter bundle, and there are several pieces that I want yardage of because I want to make dresses out of it. Ah. Oh. That would be cute. My daughter, Joanna Grace, my five-year-old, has decided that, that Triceratops are her favorite dinosaur. And she also loves T-Rexes. So it's like, okay, I need to make... <laughs> I need, so I need many to dinosaur make. things to make. Yes. I saw the best hand-washing sign at my physical therapist. It was a T-Rex on it, you know, with the short arms. And it goes, didn't wash his hands, is now extinct. <laughs> <laughs> I just that is laugh. accurate. That's I definitely what happened. Head, like, I have a big head and little arms. <laughs> and wash my hands. Didn't make it. Yeah. Yep. That's <laughs> totally what did him in. Yeah, it is. For sure. Inadequate hoof and paw washing or whatever, whatever <laughs> dinosaurs have. Oh, goodness. I just want to say that I'm actually getting somewhere on a project today. What's everybody I, working on? I am too, actually. Kind of. We're getting That's better what? at this, maybe. Our sh the show part, maybe not. But hey, the sewing part. <laughs> we'll figure it out. I, it's all about yeah. having fun and getting things done. I am making this. Ooh. 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 Does that have curves in it? or was You it know just what? The way you I sent me it? that picture. I did send you this picture. And I totally thought it was Stephanie Brandenburg. And I what was you very confused. Eyeball? I am. I got something in it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this is a quilt for my bed, which um, queen quilts are big. I know. Yeah, I have a king one on my I frame. Need, and I, feel I need like, it's like an extra king because of dogs. If they're in the middle, like you can't get quilt. <laughs> around you. Well, I, I like a lot of a lot of hangover, so I like to make I usually make my queen quilts closer to a king anyway, but this thing is big. Yeah, they are. <laughs> I don't make anything bigger than a throw size. And not because I couldn't, but because I just do lose interest. I, that, by that, is, point. that is my mental limit on being able to pay attention. But I want I want one for my bed. I need I need quilts for my yeah. bed. I actually, no, I just do throws. The um, the the city sampler group. I don't, I don't know. Oh yeah, I, I follow it, but I'm not doing it. I finished, are, I finished all the blocks weeks ago, and so I just need to like lay them all out. That's gonna be another queen. Really? Yeah. Does that end up being a queen? It does it have wait? So it has sashing or something in it? Yeah. Yeah. Right. And Maybe I, I could do it if it has sashing. I'm going to add one row to the bottom so that it's a little bit longer and it's not a square because the, the, um, the, oh you, yeah. Where's the thing? I think it ends up being 90 inches square. And I like my, my quilts to be longer than that because a queen mattress is 80 inches. Right. That makes sense. I usually just make the bed where it has like four or five inches at the top that aren't covered by the quilt because all the pillows cover it. And of course, yeah. I have a plethora of pillows. But then you can't do like the pillow tuck. And... Yeah, so no, do you do make the, the bed with the pillows or do they just constantly end up in the corner? That's no, no, no. The funny happen. thing is that that is something I do. I have Euro pillows. I have king size shams. And I have throw pillows. And sometimes I even have dolls on my bed, which I'm not always proud of. But yes, I do. It's Because totally honestly... My daughter leaves like dolls in my room and I'm like, here, I'll just put them up on the bed. And then sometimes they're mine. No shame. I think I have a doll in the background right now too. I uh, Yeah, you did. She made that dress last yeah. week. I did. That the, was on a whim. Um, Chantel, do you remember the uh, big comfy couch? 
Yes. And so I have Molly, the doll on there. I have that in my room and it goes on my bed sometimes. See? It's all no good. shame. I just, I know that I'm going into retirement well one day because I like dolls and quilting. You know, I take my fiber every day. I'm <laughs> diabetic. You know, yeah. I had my pets spayed and neutered. Like everything's going okay for me. You'll be good. You'll be set. I'll be great. Right, this is this is the one I'm making. It's a free pattern oh. by a Fat Quarter Shop. It's called, I got it upside down. It's called Night and Day Quilt Pattern. Night and Day, right there. But I'm doing it in Halloween fabrics. Ooh. Um, and so the where the pattern has you know, the same background on every one. No, mine's different. But I'm doing um, two blocks of each one. So like, this is Ooh. one more. Where it's the spider webs and the skulls. But then the next one is opposite. I actually thought oh. that. Oh. You see? Can you see it? Yeah, that's cool. So Yes. I will do that for, so do two blocks opposite for every um, fabric choice. So that's one set. And so that background, what I'm doing is that's going to be my darks with, um, if it reads as black or reads as dark. So this is, these are. Oh yeah, I that's a better gonna, example because the other one read mostly as dark in the. I like that. The Well, in real life, that green is a lot lighter. Um, I think the camera might have made the green a little bit dark. Uh, but and then here's the opposite. The, oh, so cute. The second one. I and love Halloween fabric. Love it. The third set I have done. Ooh, I like that one. Is Wait, purple and black. I love purple Ooh, yeah. and Halloween fabrics. And then this is the second. Um one with the purple and the black. So nice. the so black is the background is still just being one fabric. I'm making it, you know, multiple fabrics, but it's, it's going crappy. to be right. It's really value as wise. Right. Gotcha. That's so, what I did. I have a Halloween one up here that I haven't quilted that I finished this last year. Also a millennial um throw too because it's like the S doodle. Well, well you see it up the there? thing is, though, <laughs> it's taking longer yeah. because, like, with these, I'm kind of fussy cutting out to make sure that, you know, they're all going the right way. I don't want them to go topsy-turvy. I'm kind of being weird about it because originally I started it as a gift that I was going to give my sister-in-law. Um, I, I hope that I will do it, but I worry. I hope it. that I will. I feel the same <laughs> way about every quilt I start. This is also possibly for my sister-in-law, and I'm feeling that so much right now. This is hopefully possibly a gift for her. Yeah. So yeah. I love her for sure, you know, and I want to do something for her, but she tends to have a quick hand of um, going through the house and randomly finding things, putting it in a box and donating it just oh. random and my brother yeah. has come home multiple times and uh found random things that he did not want to be gone gone throughout the house so i worry that Ooh, my father-in-law does that one day that she would accidentally on purpose i don't know do that so <laughs> i'm trying to figure out how when I get this done, how I can give it to them and be like, if you decide that you don't want it around, you know, uh, give, give it, it to mom to or give it back to me or yeah, something like that. Don't let it go to goodwill. Yeah. My, my in-laws yeah. are here. I don't know the answer to that. And they, yeah, um, no, it's hard. they like to, to do, do things for us. And so I came home today and they had mowed the lawn, which was great. It needed to be mowed. And, but then I saw all this, like, branches. It was, like, flower, dried up flower blooms on it. I'm like, what is that? And we had this giant hydrangea bush in the front, which I love. But it needed to be trimmed back because it, like, gets all over everything. That thing is, like, waist high now. And it used to be taller than me. And it's just sticks popping up. And I'm like, Stephanie, don't say oh, anything. Oh, <laughs> oh, say anything. Over, and, overreach. In the morning. Like overreach. 
in the morning, I'm going to be like, hey, so I have to shoot a bunch of video. We're, we're doing a spring clean at video and I'm in charge of the B-roll. I'm doing it of our stuff. So it's awesome what you did yesterday, but don't do anything more because I need to film as we do it. And so that will keep more things from happening, I think. But <laughs> that's like, oh I love you. You came from a good place, but. I really like that bush and oh anyway sorry I'm trying to get myself fixed up here so i can iron it's all good who else is here does anybody want Pat to just pop in anything? yeah does anyone else want to say hi misty sherry come join us Pat we just don't... popped on cindy you don't we have to turn your out. your camera on she... you can just chat and just do the audio kim... yeah kim just left um, but before she left, she had said that she was enjoying listening because she got to um, organize all her new fabric from her shop hops. Ooh, oh, fun. nice. Yeah, sometimes that's what I need. Like, I just got all of these done because I was talking and listening and not thinking about all of these. Now I have to iron all of them. Yeah. Which is also why think that it's um when we're talking about therapy and uh quilting and sewing as a therapeutic thing it's because you're doing something and you're not thinking about those things that normally your head is filled with that brings you anxiety and worry. yes yeah it's true it's like you're or you for me it's like will I be able to finish that I never finish anything blah 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 and my head starts ruminating when really I should just be enjoying the process yeah and then sometimes I find that the things that I really prefer not to do uh, that aren't my favorite to do, um, if I do them while I'm in a group or talking or distracted by something else, I get through them faster. And, you know, my mind's not sitting there going, oh, man, I dread doing this. I dread doing this. Yeah. That's During awesome. my worse depression months, which are usually in winter and such like that, but also during times where I've had a harder time. I found that I couldn't even get the dishes done. And I would literally just like call my dad or call anybody. And be like, can I talk to you while I do my dishes? Because I can't function right now. And every time I was able to get them done, as long as I had somebody there to like call and be like, can you talk to me about anything? Don't they call anything? that mirroring? Really, you're just in the room with somebody and then you're able to stay more focused. Uh, oh, but it worked. Whatever it was, it helped a lot. Oh, where am I putting this? There we go. So I went down a little bit of a rabbit hole this this week. So one of the things I did Saturday night afterwards, after my long day, is I my husband came home and was like let's put the hutch up. And I have been begging him to get the hutch up for like months, maybe. And I was the like, iconic hutch. I'm like, that yeah, this is good. the hutch that was in the background of my first YouTube videos ever. So, um, we, I'm like, I'm not going to pass this opportunity up. So I did. And then I was up till five 45 in the morning, <laughs> putting everything perfectly on the hutch. And we were like deep cleaning our kitchen, but I'm so happy with it. It looks good. This is like how it turned it out. Good. And yeah. it's so good. It's got all my favorite things on there. But then I like stole everything from this like shelf area in the living room. And so that was bare. And I'm like, well, shoot, now what do I need to put here? So Rifle Paper Company, I think they still are having a sale on their prints where you can get 50% off a of print. So, and oh, I found out that she, um, Anna Bond put out two more books with the Puffin or three more books with the Puffin and Bloom collection. So I'm now going to have my little like oh. rifle paper company section, uh, in my living room, which would be great. Oh. I'm so excited for it, but I have a rifle paper Hello. calendar section you do. in this room. Yeah. I'll just show you in a little bit some of my framed stuff from calendars. Yeah, I also got a but, calendar yeah. that'll go up in the kitchen. And... I keep my calendars. I think those are like three, four, five years old. 
But there I have all the pretty art, the rifle paper company. So yeah. I have like a whole calendar display. I wonder if it'll be okay with me like turning it this way and not focusing on me. I like your Tim Gunn. Yeah. You make it work. It's the right room for him. But it those are all calendars. Definitely the right room for him. Did anybody else watch Patrick one way and be like, all right, to the fabric store? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can do anything. I'm going to make it work. And I, I could not. But now I, I, I can mostly. <laughs> <laughs> but at the time, I didn't know what I was doing at all. I was still figuring things it's out. all right. I think that was before I knew that, like, all presser feet weren't quarter inch presser feet and what a walking put was for. And that's fair. Yeah. Uh, those are critical things to know. They're pretty critical things to know. This is like, I mean, YouTube existed, but not in the capacity that Basic, it does now. Yeah. I mean, I, the first thing when I tried to learn how to quilt, I had to try to learn how to quilt from a crappy magazine at Walmart that I bought at like midnight as a teenager or like young adult, maybe 18. You didn't have any these are the options we had. I what? didn't. You, you didn't have anyone in, like a family member or anyone to help teach you. Well, you know, not at eleven at night as a you know a kid trying to enjoy summer in you know the Midwest. Right. Basically, no. I mean, my grandmother quilted, but it wasn't. You know, it was going to be like a sit down lesson. I was like, well, you should be able to read a book and figure this stuff out. <laughs> um, which is basically my like my go-to feeling about anything anyways but yeah that's not always really the case I'm like that with YouTube it's like I'll just YouTube it and figure it out yeah it'll be fine yeah well, it's different totally now. what can go wrong you can do that mostly but I except can. for figuring out how to properly put a zoom where you want it to go but seriously though yeah. the first time I did it Oh, Misty, what was that? Last night I actually binge watched all of your beginner sewing tutorials because I've been having such a hard problem um, getting my points to match up. I'm like, something's going on in my head. <laughs> so let's just get out of my head. So I sat and I watched all of your beginner videos that you did four years ago without mm -hmm. the music in the background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> people hated the original one with music. They were great. I like the ones with music as well. <laughs> I did watch a few of those. Um, but I just wanted to say thank you for those because I think maybe I got it out of my head now why I can't get things to go together right. Well, there you go. It takes a minute. For the first year and a half, nothing went together right. And it was because I wasn't sewing with a quarter inch seam. Or like today, somebody had something not work out. And like her pressing wasn't as good as it could be. But then we were like flipped it over and we're like measuring and she had cut one strip too skinny. And so, you know, she threw the whole thing off. Yeah, threw the whole thing off. She was a quarter inch off, which is too much to fudge. And, you know, it's an easy fix. But if you don't know what you're doing wrong and don't know how to fix it, like that's where you it gets to be problematic well even i mean i had already taken a class on quilting and i had already made a few quilts but i still watched your like very first video on like making that free quilt pattern yeah with the squares or whatever mm -hmm. i still found it super helpful for like precision wise we had people who had been quilting for years that watched that series and said that they had things that they still learned so it's totally doable. Yeah. And you could always pick something up. Like I was in today, like the person was very competent, really didn't need to take the class. She could have figured it out probably from watching the video, but she had a new machine and it was a brother, which is basically the same guts as baby lock, which is what I sell on. And so I went to demo on her machine and she goes, my Porter presser foot hasn't arrived yet. And so here's where you have to line it up. And I was like, you don't have a piecing stitch? And I looked over and she sure did had a piecing stitch. 
And so I was like, okay, so you go to this and then the, it moves over and then you just line it up with here and you're good to go. If you want to be a scant, you just hit this button and then you have a scant corner. Oh, yeah. And she was like, gosh, the class was worth it just for that. <laughs> you know, and sometimes it's just yeah. a really yeah. simple thing that really makes a huge difference for you. I, uh, I made some noise in a Bernina group that ruffled some feathers because I don't use my quarter inch foot. I use the regular foot and I move my needle over, which apparently among them is like, all you have to do is use the single hole plate. You have to use this foot. You have to use this setting. And if you do all of those steps and jump through a hoop of fire, you will have the perfect seam. And I'm like, or like on your old machine, you just move the needle over a few notches, test it a few times and make sure it works for you. Well, That's you know, option. Bernina makes their money on all the feet, you know. Oh, I know. And I have them all too. They're great. But um, I have these extra wide feed dogs, which are wonderful for feeding things. But if you're not using them all, then what's the point? So, uh, yeah, that was a that was a big a big ruffle of feathers in the group. I thought I was going to get kicked out or something. Like people were going nuts. And then some people were like, oh my God, that was so smart. It was like, yeah, it's like, I went from like a normal machine to this machine. So it made sense to me. Well, this Move the needle over. I'm still we still have people joining us on YouTube. Nice. It's the, the second shifters as we're going to probably this end up is starting to call Georgia. you. Um, she's from Georgia. Oh, cool. I'm trying to think. Georgia is in uh, New That's York. Eastern time zone. Let's see. Yep. Excuse me. I'm like getting to <laughs> Stephanie's bedtime no is coming up. <laughs> no yawning yet. Oh, we have someone from Texas watching. Nice. My, my husband's trying to call me. He's not in the like, house? Let me let you know. No. He's on his way home. Okay. I was going to say, is the call coming from inside the house? And if so, he can handle it. <laughs> he can do it. He can do it. He works second shift, so he's on his way home. Okay. I think I have some more garment questions, actually. What are some of the the things, because I know Gwendolyn and I were talking about this before too, it's been brought up probably every single week. What are some of the things that you feel like you learn in garmentry that you don't learn in quilting that would be help or, helpful for quilters? Yeah. Um, because, or like, what have you noticed that quilters do that people in garmentry don't do? Because that might be a little easier from you, for pressing you. Pressing seams to the side. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't do that. Well, I do if I'm being lazy. I'm sitting here pressing an entire row open and quest wondering why in the world I let Stephanie talk me into starting to do this. This takes forever. Um you get great results. It does take forever, but the I mean it is beautiful. It is. Look. And it's very satisfying to look at like when you're done, like look at the back and all the seams are pressed open and it looks nice and it's like oh, yeah. <laughs> But um, like that's satisfying. I don't know. <laughs> Let's see what I've noticed that so garment sewing and quilting sewing are they're similar but they're different. Um I don't I feel like garment sewers are and this is and I don't know if, if you guys would agree with me or not, but they are not afraid to tackle new techniques when it comes to quilting so like specifically curves um because there's so many curves in garment sewing um in ease like that's that's not a new thing that's something that we're very very used to um and different types of fabric too like different that's scary for a quilter. I have to admit, yeah, the yeah. idea that it's you, you get the put into there. the quilt box, you get yeah. put into the quilt block, and then you're like, oh, we can't leave that that safe space because yeah. we don't know how. 
Or I think on top of that, um, more experienced, like really experienced um, quilters who maybe do it on a professional level all the time for decades um, will encourage or even discourage new quilters from trying something that is a little bit more challenging until they have worked on a like a simpler project. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, like the fundamentals. Like you gotta yeah. have these fundamentals under you. When actually, when I started quilting, I kind of liked that I was a little dim about the entire process because I didn't know something was supposed to be hard. And Same. so I would do it. And maybe my outcome wasn't perfect, but I think I would have rather have figured that out then but than have haven't been, been scared of it to begin with. Well, yeah. one, ex one example was um, I was looking at a Judy Niemeyer uh, pattern and, you know, those are pretty complicated um, uh, paper piecing patterns. Yeah with lots of curves, lots of triangles, and that is challenging. And even though I've been sewing since I was a child, many um, things, mostly garment, and then periodically just over time in my life, I've did a little bit of quilting here and there, nothing like now, you know, the last couple of years is a lot different. Um, before, you know, I don't know, before 2016, maybe I had five to 10 quilts under my belt. So not very many at all. And they were all really simple, um, mostly hand done, you know, that type of thing. Um, now when I went to, to buy it, the lady that was, um, at the shop that was selling it, she was like, oh, are you familiar with these patterns? And they go, no. And she goes, this is a super complicated. See right here, it says for advanced quilter, you know, do you have a lot of quilting experience? And, and I go, well, you know, I feel competent enough to do this. I feel like my skill level is, you know, I'm, I can look at it and tell if I feel comfortable or not. Um, and, and et cetera, et cetera. And she kept trying to get me to buy a pattern that was a beginner pattern, but I wasn't interested in. I wasn't interested in this super easy, boring pattern. I wanted something, you know, challenging. You wanted a challenge in your pocket. Right. Yeah. right. Whenever and I wanted to learn a new skill, I would pick a king size pattern and I would do it. And that included adding curves and paper piecing in one go to, <laughs> to learn it good. Yes. And you do it so many times that yeah. by the end of a king size, you're you got like it. proficient at it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, it was like Chantel. I didn't know it was supposed to be hard. And so I just did it. And I think I'm better off for it because you learn really well by making mistakes, I think. Right. I didn't, I didn't like when I started to get that fear and I'm still trying like years later to break through that. Like, it's okay to mess up. I know the fabric's beautiful, but like, try something, play with it. Like I did that doll dress over there the other day and the fabric wasn't particularly interesting to me. Plus it's a small, small doll, you know, but I was willing to like make up the pattern on the spot. I did her the other day. Well, that's cute. Yeah. I was willing to make up the pattern on the spot because it wasn't too much, you know, it, it wasn't, wasn't so much to worry about. Right. Yeah. But I made this in less than like from basically cutting the fabric out to making this in like less than 20 minutes. But I didn't have to think, but there wasn't as much pressure. And I think the thing with quilting is that so much there, there's so much buildup that, you know, it has to, you have to cut it right and you have to press it right. And you have to, you have to do every step with a certain level of perfection or it's not going to turn out good. Because it is math, it's geometry. It is. And I mean, but if you like, were going to do I, like a custom fitted corset, like it still needs to be that. But for most garment right. stuff, you probably don't need to be quite that precise. But then it's like, I've been afraid to just try improv. So like last week I worked on that project where I basically just sewed all the pieces together and I've had it up on my wall for a week and you know what? I kind of dig it. But it took me like... That project almost seemed harder than what I'm doing because it was like breaking out of that box and mm -hmm. being willing to like mess it up. So Susan on YouTube says apparel is a very different mindset because she doesn't have to fit the quilt to her body. Um, 
That is very true. Yeah, she's That's done facing point. zippers, interfacing patterns can be confusing. And she's done yeah. both in, from formal gowns all the way to baby garments. And is, pre- and is a pretty for fish or quilter. But yeah, it's geometry. And I can bring that, you know, back and forth some. Like, like I can draft simple patterns right now because I understand enough about that. And I can make the alterations to Angela's stuff um, so that it fits her properly. But I wouldn't call myself super proficient. Excuse me. But I'm also oh, always young. a curious person. And I think that that has a lot more to do with whether you can learn a skill, whether it's quilting, garmentry, how to take yes. care of your lawn, any of those things. If you're curious and willing to accept that you might make a mistake and screw something up and that's okay. So like Angela and I are going to take a course on how to make your own um, trouser making or your own trouser pattern to fit perfectly and because she needs that she needs like something that doesn't have a super tiny elastic waist um and so that it can fit her in the waist and in the length and i would like to have that because it's hard to find pants that fit me too sometimes and but i want to start with her because that's less fabric and you know just (laughs) give it a try i mean we could do the doll Dolls aren't exactly human proportion, though. So we're going to start with the actual human. Fair, fair, fair. And so, you know, these are things that I want to do that I'm excited about doing. It's just fighting time. <laughs> I'm not going to last yawn. much longer yes. today. That's all right. Susan is also talking about bag making. Yes, that is a totally different skill as well. Yeah, I, that one comes to me easily. I don't know what it is about that. But then again, I have a very 3D mind. Yeah, same. So even the idea of like, I made that doll dress without having to really think about it. But then again, it's a doll dress. It's going to look good. It's on a doll. Like, what do you? No, you, there are bad looking doll dresses. You and I both know this. Well, yes, there are bad looking <laughs> doll dresses, but I feel like they had to have not tried. I think they did try very hard. It's just like not the, it's like a 1990s style, you know, it doesn't look like. And not in one of those adorable throwback ways. No. Have you did doll pantaloons? I have not. Oh yeah, I have. Yes, I love those. I've done them for my daughter too. (laughs) I know. Not the cutest look. Did you have, Stephanie Brennan, did you have anything um, else in that, t- talking about that with the quilting versus the apparel or garment uh, sewing? Uh, I think that one thing that I thought about is, and this kind of goes back to what the, um, sorry, I forget her name, the gal on YouTube said about it's a different mindset. It, it really, it really is because a quilt, like you want it to be perfectly flat, like you want it, you know maybe not a square, but you know, you're generally doing two dimensions. And one thing that I have thought about it. is generally speaking, and, and, and in my experience, and Stephanie Seving might might disagree with me on this, but I feel like with quilting, it requires a lot more precision and a lot more, like, I don't want to say perfection because like, I, you know, we're, we're not, we're not looking for perfection here, but like, right your cutting needs to be a lot more precise. You know, your seam allowance needs to be a lot more precise. And with, with garment sewing, there is more leeway. On yeah. That. Like even if I would looking, agree. Yeah. And like, and the fabrics can play a, can play a big part in that. Um, Cause if you're, if you're working with a fabric that has some stretch to it, like that has a lot of forgiveness. Like if you need to make, make the ease work <laughs> to, to match notches or to match the seams, like you, there's a lot more room to finagle. Right, or gathering, or put an extra pleat in, or put a tuck here, or a dot there, yeah. Yeah, or you can, you can kind of, you can fudge it, and and there's, you have a lot more room to fudge, and a lot more room to, to, to make it work, so the cutting, and the initial part of quilting, I think, it does need to be a lot more precise, and, and, and your seam allowance, but the actual sewing, I find, is a lot easier with quilting, because 90% of the time, you're just doing straight lines. Yeah. 
And that, I mean, and that is a skill that need, that that takes practice and to master that for, that quarter inch seam. And it helps to have the right foot as Stephanie Seving. Yeah. <laughs> <can attest. laughs> um, Do you take anything from your garment um, sewing um, techniques that you use and implement them into your quilting that is maybe not um, normal for quilters to do? I can't say that I have. Um, maybe when it comes to hand stitching, because I. That's a good point. The, 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 the small number of times that I do hand stitch binding, um, I've noticed that the technique that I use is different than most other quilters. And not to so like, arrogant, yeah, but it's, sure. it's um, you can't, it's, it's faster the way that I do it. And it's a lot more invisible the way that I do it. How do you do it? Share. It's, let me see if I can. Inquiry. Chantal and Gwendolyn wants while, to know. While you the look for it, um, Susan <laughs> on YouTube. Invisible stitching with binding, not with. Mm -hmm. While you look for that, Susan on YouTube said she just flew up to New Hampshire and created a bell gown out of her own brain for a 13 year old granddaughter. It had been 15 years since she had sewn. But it fit Amazing. absolutely perfectly. But it was many, many yards of tool satin and, and crinoline. And it was a pain. And she amazed herself doing it. Yeah. I always, this is why I like garment sewing. And I think I've said this before on here is, you know, I've done so many quilts. I, I know they're going to turn out. I know that if I do this thing, it's going to work. And if it, something goes wrong, I know exactly how to fix it. With garments, it's an adventure every time. And it is. <laughs> it's like it challenges my brain more. And I can still do some really amazing things. But I just really enjoy not knowing for sure that this thing is going to turn out. Like, and that I might need to problem solve along the way in a way that quilting doesn't need to be that way. Let's see. I like that I don't have to wear my quilts <laughs> because I'm not always the best hanger. I really just want to hide under quilts and read <laughs> books about quilts. There you go. And when I make clothes, I have to wash them more often than quilts. So I guess that's why I quilt. Sylvia also says that her uh, mom did garments and the way she would bind her quilts was also invisible. Yeah, we want to know what what is the secret? Yeah, the invisibility cloak. Do you bind the way I do, or do you bind different? I I don't know. What glue? <laughs> well, Sorry. glue, yes. But when I actually hate, stitch it down, mine is pretty. You can't see it either. Because I the same way. You do? No, I haven't seen you bind. I love um, stitching down linings. It's that's like my favorite part because it's almost done and it that's where you can really like make it look really neat and higher yeah, end. That's where I put it off. Then um then what you would find in the store because in the store you're just gonna see the surging line and I mean there's a place for that. I've definitely used okay. surge things, but so I don't have this pulled yet, but this is one of the pin cushions that I was working on stitching up the and then and so this is what mine tends to, I mean, it, it's still loose. I don't have it. Do you see that? Yeah. 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 That's what, I use the same stitch when I do binding. Um, and so I don't think it's invisible because you can tell the difference that that's the part that I hand sewed closed versus that's the machine seam, you know, but you don't, but it's invisible in a way that you don't see the thread. Now, this isn't, this isn't, I haven't knotted this off, so this is still loose because I still have to add more stuffing into this. So it's, um, I don't have it lined up um, just perfect, but that's mine. Susan says she uses a blind hand stitch to do hers. That's kind of what, what I do. And that's, I just kind of whipped together something here. Let's see if I can... Let me re rearrange so I can get to the camera more easily. Ugh. Okay, so, and this is like really, really thick 
black thread. So you can see, yeah. So you can kind of get an idea. And I just did a few stitches. Oh, yeah, I love that. And what I do, let's see if I can do this. Okay, so this is going to be upside down. <laughs> um, Here, pull it up a little bit. We can't see. There you go. Oh, there we go. Okay. So, so this is upside down. So this pink part is the binding and the, the Alice in glass is, would be the, the backing. Mm. So where the, where the thread comes out on the binding, I go like just underneath it on the backing and then come up on the, the fold of the binding and bring the needle through about maybe like half a centimeter. So the stitch is going more horizontal. And that's then, the oh, way yeah, that's I bind. I, yeah. If you watch our binding it? tutorial, it's it's that way too. Okay. Yeah. But then do you go immediately down over and through again, essentially, so that same motion? Yeah. Kind of a side wave going, but it's not, it's pretty, yeah, that's how I do too. Susan is in. But I had to toy around with that to figure that out. Yeah, I did this. I mean, this was pretty intuitive to me. And I don't say that's like toot my own horn, but like when finishing linings or, or doing an invisible hem or something on a pair of pants, it's the exact same type of stitch that yeah, I do. That's how I do uh, all that stuff too. To work, okay, I have an invisible over here. hem machine. Um, let me see. I didn't get to see. I didn't get to see what you do. I finally decided to Join give up Zoom. on YouTube and hop over here. That's <laughs> <laughs> where the fun is. That's fun too. But yeah, you could. I'm sitting, in my, fun. I'm sitting in my recliner of of living vicariously through you guys. No, you're all good. Oh well, live with <laughs> us, not vicariously. <laughs> you could, um, um, if you turned your screen on, you would be able to show a picture. And well. Or don't um, if you don't want to show. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't want to, that's fine too. Yeah. How would I do that though? Can you share that? Can I share a screen? Are you? I'm on my yes. phone. You can... well, I don't know how it works on a phone. Um, yeah. But well, I usually you can share a screen on the phone too. But but like a picture, yeah. like your. Yeah. I've never attempted uh, to share uh, a screen. There should be phone. a turn on video. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, well, I'm talking about sharing a picture on my phone. Yeah. Oh, I don't know how to yeah. do that. I don't know how to share screens know. from a mobile device. I only know how to do she it from a... You could probably just put it in something. the chat. Yeah, you could do that. I mean, we would be yeah. able to see it. You think so? Okay, let me see if yeah. I can. I've never done that before, and I use Zoom a lot. Yeah, there's a oh, file we option. We need. <laughs> yeah, you, we need to learn how to get it so people can see <laughs> pictures. We need to learn how to Zoom. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I haven't. I've never seen where you can actually put a picture in it. If you and, click uh, the file, I think it will show up. Wait a minute here. Hold on. Back up. The file? What file would that be? Mm -hmm. I um, file yeah, see, down at the bottom, down at the bottom, of, down at the bottom, it says share. Yeah. And usually you can share... Let me see. Oh, share photos. What well, I have to pick the photo though, and it's buried somewhere in my twenty thousand pictures. <laughs> me okay. too. I relate well, to that. Oh like, Lord. Lord. So in October. Let me go. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. October. Whoosh. What are you saying? Mine's like twenty fifteen. What are you saying? Oh my God. Yeah. So you're what gonna be that? whooshing for a million hours. <laughs> you can. Yeah, I will. What I, what I like to do though is I like to find the the months that I took the picture in. That's what I do. Oh yeah, Just and then ratchet it through. Uh huh. Yeah. And go. Where is the stupid picture? <laughs> yep. Let me see. Where is this child? She's in here somewhere. Well, you're looking. I think once you locate mm -hmm. it. I think we should probably mm -hmm. call it a night because I have to lecture tomorrow and my in-laws oh, are asleep you? upstairs or, and I might oh. be too loud for them. I'm not sure. So. All right. Let me see here. Um, what are you doing? What, what, lecturing about? Yeah. What are you, what, what are you lecturing? Um, I think I talked about it a little earlier, but you guys may not bet on yet. Um, I am talking about how to use color scale and value 
to make your quilt design successful. We can see your um. Oh, that's really cool. Oh, fun! That is amazing. I wish you could see the back. I didn't put that picture in here. I don't think I can. It doesn't show it. And the back is all is laced up, so it's a skirt. Did you like drape that? Like, how did you come up with that? Yeah, you drape it like right on her body or a mannequin. Yeah, I did. It has eight gores, and then it was all kind of like scalloped. I just, I had to lay it out, and I had to, my daughter kept coming in and looking at me and giving me the look. And What are you doing, Mom? I'm so, listen, I am thinking. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> because it has a, it has a hoop, and then it has a crinoline, and then it has a satin uh, underskirt, and then it has a um, tool that I had to gather. This isn't even the finished the finished version of it because I gathered the tool you can see underneath the edge of the mm-hmm. of where it's oh, yeah. looped up there yeah that's all tool and I gathered it real tight so it's real full so you can't really see the lining underneath there but it had a it had a hoop and then a crinoline to make it stiff enough and cover the hoop and then it had to have the underslip and then it had to have all that tool and then the satin is like a stretchy gold crinkled satin Dang. And the top of the front is brocade. And I think the parts over her sleeves are, um, or over her, like the, the front part of it and everything, is that same crinkly, stretchy satin. We didn't realize it was stretchy till we got it. Had, we had to order it. Yeah. Because they don't, they don't have a place up there to get anything. So... Well, it's not That's fun. my fear with garment what sewing is girl. like working with the fabric and not knowing what I'm working with. Like it kind of freaks me out a bit. It wouldn't have freaked like, me out years ago, but you know, now that I've been quilting for so long and I, I don't know, it, it. Oh. Yeah, I totally have to get into the mindset. I can't just do it. I have to. I have to get into the mindset of what what is it that my end goal is going to be and how do I know how to get it there? But I started, you're talking about making, um, drafting a seven, you're talking about going to a class where you're going to learn how to draft trousers. Yes. And yes. that was, when I was 10 years old, my, my grandmother turned me loose in her sewing room and said, here's the machine and here's how it works. And you can take anything you want out of my closet and do whatever you want. Whoa. And so uh, that was the first thing I made was a pair of bell-bottom trousers with a zipper and no waistband. Really? Oh, yeah. you had no idea. It was supposed to be hard. Oh, I had no idea. I had a pattern and yeah, kind of, yeah. But I mean, I've been watching my grandma. My grandma used to draft patterns for all of her children when they were babies. She would just take a piece of newspaper out, lay it on the floor and measure the kid and draft, you know, whatever she's going to draft. But that's how, that's how she always did it because she didn't have money and... You know, so I can follow. Yeah, I think it's just a lost a turn art. Out. Nobody knows how to make things yeah. anymore. Or I mean, it's like me and dinner. I'm just gonna go get the rotisserie chicken <laughs> because I just couldn't imagine yes. having to make a chicken like Stephanie did that one day. She's really, oh, exactly. I just made it. And like yeah. people just make chickens. Still? I was being cheap, is what I was doing. Oh, there's the back. That's yeah. gorgeous. There's the back. Yeah, that's so. Oh. It's all it. I had to make it to where in case, because we weren't sure what was going on with the play. It ended up, they ended up shoving it out like three or four months. And there were several girls, like I had made it to where in case she had too much pizza, she'd be able to adjust things. <laughs> so it doesn't even have a zipper That's in the back. Fair. It's just kind of overlapped and it's real soft. So we just, I mean, just took like yellow girl green ribbon and did, yeah. It was, so was a this job. for prom or homecoming? No, it was like? she. This this particular granddaughter. I have nine grand. No, actually, I have ten grandkids now. But this one um, is my youngest daughter's daughter, and she is in three different theater companies in, in, up there. And that's so Belle. she and then and she's she's actually gotten. She was Ariel last year, and she's Belle this year. And she just got the the other theater company in the next town over. Um, she's actually going to pl- be playing Nala in um, The Lion King. Okay. So she's she's real she's really a good singer, and I think that's what does it for her. Plus, she's very 
she just does what she does. It's funny because she's such a shy little kid. It's it's funny to see her be so be on the stage and do what she does. Well, she it come alive it definitely there. totally hundred percent looked about like Belle to me as soon as you popped up the picture. I, oh, I love fantastic the fantastic job. The you know what? on the bottom is insane. Yeah. yeah. It looks Pinterest, really good. beautiful. And Pinterest and YouTube are your and Etsy with pattern. I I wanted a pattern, but I couldn't find one I was looking for. I'm like, dang, man, how am I going to do this? So I just looked at what they had and said, I can do this. So I measured it all out and said, I don't know. There was a, a lady in uh, France that does the drafts patterns for gowns and stuff. And so I watched a couple videos. Trouble if it was, it, she spoke in French and the guy who was interpreting spoke English with a French accent, so it wasn't going to be too much good anyway. You're like, I don't know. No. no world. I don't even know. Rachel yeah. Maskey does a lot of um, like custom pieces. Yeah. Um, she's doing some of her own yeah. things. Yeah. Bernadette Banner. Oh, yes. I love Bernadette. She has a she book. Does. I need to actually page through it, but it's all hand she, sewing techniques. That yes. have been like lost over time that yeah. the Victorian used is to fantastic. use. Yeah. Who was that? Bernadette Banner. I have the book Banner. right behind me. I'll go grab it. Yay, a book. And Here's she had a great ship. series on pressing too. Well, yeah, I want to know all these things. Information hoarder over here. Yeah. <laughs> and then um uh Stephanie Brennan, do you have any YouTubers that um you like um that that work on um like costuming and cosplay or even garment well we I both watch Rachel, bernadette Rachel, Rachel maskey and bernadette do bernadette does a lot of garment not yeah. just um cosplay she does like historical type garment yeah. the same way as kathy hay i want that book yeah this um, is the book is bernadette, bernadette young she or yeah yeah I think she's younger than I am. Sorry. Like oh, Bernadette yeah, Banner. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I watch her. I watch her all the time. Yeah. So these are historical hand stitches um, that were used to accomplish different um, shapes and silhouettes. Um, so you're going to bring that on vacation, right? I mean, I mean, I'm trying to bring as few. I'll put it in my as bag possible. as soon as I see you. Okay. So I'm looking <laughs> it up on Amazon now. Hold it up again, Stephanie. There you go. I didn't. I didn't know she had a book out. Yeah, like, so she, she did this, and I think it made it to the oh, awesome. New York Times bestsellers. I think. I would say it would. It's a beautiful book. Yeah, it is gorgeous, and I think she that did all of her own photography too. Oh, that's great! So, like, here's the illustration do, for darning a sock. She doesn't oh. do anything um, poorly. Like, she goes over the top for everything. She right. Is, She's really a perfectionist. Like a true couture type yeah. seamstress. So she, but, you know, you can take what you want from that too. You don't have to like do everything she does, but you can see how it's done and then kind of say, okay, I don't want to go to that extent, but I want to make it look nice. So right. how can I adjust things to my own fingers? Absolutely. She did yeah. garments on Broadway, I believe. Yeah, um, for I think costumes. so too. Costumes, and yeah. then got really into historical um well it's easy to do things. yeah and she moved from america i mean easy to fall in love with it i love watching her put on her costumes and things and see all the layers and all yeah. the little bits and it, she just is so darling she's such a cute little person so it starts off with just like basic hand stitches and like back stitch every so often oh. so that way it's a little bit stronger it's not going to come out as easy um let's see we got how running the, stitch basing. Has, how many of the stitches in that book have you used and applied to your sewing? Um I don't really I have this is actually my first time looking through it. I kind so of collect book books and Chinese. I get through it. Uh basing I've done, I've done the running stitch, I've done a half back stitch done whip stitch i'm not done herringbone this one i'm very excited to do um this is when you're applying um 
coarser canvas to make things stiffer, which is a lot of times used in like lapels mm -hmm. and coating because I would love to make a coat. Um, I think she has um, one in one of her videos. She like tutorials that. Yeah. And yeah, for like your collars, so yeah. your collars will roll. Yeah. Oh. I'm learning so much, but I'm also like falling asleep at my iron. Same. Uh, this is like I a wonder, hand pinking stitch. I've never tried that. Um, I wonder if I should get that down on my tablet or something. I wonder if I can get it from the library. Maybe. Hmm. This is a hand fell stitch. I have done this on a sewing machine, but not uh, by hand ever. Yeah, I've seen that. But yeah, she did all of her own photography too. It's just like she's very talented. Yes. Just um, why she has a million followers. And she's I've hilarious. done this, the Taylor's clapper, to get things flat. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Um there's a whole hey, section hey. on hand closures, which I have never done. Um what's that? Hand closures. So, like, I've never hand sewn a buttonhole. I've only ever done that on a machine. Fair. Have you ever done upholstery? I have stapled stuff. Oh. Yeah. I reupholster my, <laughs> I reupholster my sofa. I yeah. thought it was a good idea. So, I tore it all apart and put it all back together again. I welted. <laughs> welted. And I you also feel about that now. I, it was great. It turned out really pretty. And I what did is? my car. I, I reupholstered. I had a 64 Chevy. I tore all the seats Ooh. out and reupholstered the seats. This oh my gosh, that's fascinating. We have hand sewn it, well, eyelets. It's called, it's called, gosh, I think I can do this. <laughs> yeah, see, I need more of that in my life. Where did my spontaneity go? Oh, yes, I had children. <laughs> I, I do a lot of spontaneity at work and when I'm doing alterations and stuff. It's like, I'm not sure how to do this. And I'll either like go on YouTube or something if I'm really not sure or be like, oh, I'm just going to mm. do this at the other. And just, yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> Figure it out. Yeah. And I think that's part of part of my problem is, is I'm a I'm a one shot pony. I'll say, oh, I really want to make that quilt. And then I'll make that quilt. I'll make it exactly the way I want it. And then I'll say, okay, let's put this pattern away. I'm not doing that again. <laughs> so I go on to the yeah. next thing. That's fair. <laughs> so yeah. I have not run gathers by hand ever, but her technique on how to make them lay really nice and even, I have oh. used, and that is fantastic. I have done that. <laughs> yes. Cool. Well, I did costuming in college for a while, which apparently Stephanie didn't realize was a job. Or she oh my, been I would have been there too. I would have totally, I, we needed to Gathers like. Gathers and pleats. They found out that I was a decent hand sewer, which I hated at that point. Now I'd be like, <gasps> yeah, stick me in a room all day to hand sew. We <gasps> need to bring it and we oh. need to practice with Liberty. Mocking. My I know. great, I have oh, an apron nice. from my great grandmother. Um, that is smocked, and apparently she used to smock everything. It is like somebody like local. Yeah. Sorry, somebody local to me has one of those smocking machines. Like the really, they're pretty expensive for sale, and it pops up on my marketplace every single time. And I'm like, oh, I want to buy that. This does not yeah, even look hard. Hand, that was super fun. I've done that with for dresses this, for my kids. This doesn't when look they were hard. Yeah, yeah, I, well, I meant the like the part where you daughter. actually make the smock yeah. that you would then pull. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, yeah. That, that part of it. They mm -hmm. have this machine that it, it's not really a machine. I mean, it's mechanical, but it doesn't plug in or anything that like pokes the holes and threads the whole plate. Okay. And then you get to do the fun part. I like to get to the fun part. <laughs> yeah. I agree with I you. Hand smocking is super fun. I have it I have really a lot, but I did a class and I made a bonnet for my daughter when she was mm. real young. Um, oh, I think she was about one and a half years old. And so I still have it. She still has it in her keepsake for um, her, her children if she ever has a girl. So far, it's all boys. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, you would you'd probably really love it, Chantel. Oh, I, I did probably a, I would. That would be dress. very fun. I made a plaid dress and I used the plaid to mark my smocking stitches so that when oh, it came see, that's together, clever. Yes. That was and then that was really funny. Just remembered that it was like I think it was like black and kind of black and rust color with a little red strip through it. And then it had a big red bow on it and it had Aww. long sleeves and 
I'm just remembering thinking my oldest daughter is 47. So that was, she wore that when she was in kindergarten, I think. Yeah. My, my apron that I have from my um, great grandmother is it's like a gingham. And so she just Mm -hmm. used the pattern to mark mark it. Mm-hmm. They didn't have to iron on. They have like if you buy something that's smocking. Well, I don't know back whenever they had those in patterns, but you would just put the iron on. They had a little iron on, and you would lay it on the pattern piece, and then just iron it. And then you just use the stitches that were that you'd ironed on. Of the there's dots a place. You- there's a place called I think it's called the Children's Corner, and it's mm-hmm. in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. Mm-hmm. And they're a big. They they sell Liberty fabrics. Mm. But they do a lot of children's pattern with like the traditional smocking and the traditional little children's dresses and, you know, the church pants and the suspenders and the little bonnets and all the adorableness that is little girls and little boys and, you know. So you can get like first, whole smocking things in there. Got my very first great granddaughter this last uh September and she, you know the problem with this is that nowadays the girls don't dress their baby girls in dresses like that and oh, I, I, that, I always did my <laughs> girls wore fluffy flu flu rough because that's what I like to sew so but yeah so this one's got you know t-shirts and bloomers and big things in her head and I just say okay well whatever go with the big things on the head yeah lean they, into they, that Go yeah. find some big things to put on that baby's head. Yeah, well. <laughs> big bows, big bonnet. It'll be yeah, perfect. that might happen some point in time. I'm not too sure what, but yeah, she she was born premature and she, she just, she's a darling little baby, but her mama doesn't have any idea what to do with her because she didn't think she was ever going to have children. So oh, here now, there well. she is. There's pictures of Hazel. Her name's Hazel. Uh, I have a Hazel too. I've not seen it just yet. Do you? It's thinking about thinking oh, about it. Go. Oh, there we go. Oh, very cute. Very cute. <laughs> a little bit over. She learned how to crawl already. She's oh, just scoot, 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 scoot all over. She's um six and a half months I think oh, she wow. just scoots all over everywhere she's not crawling crawling but she's really moving when she wants something she'll head across the floor that was so, my hazel too I put a can of nachos on the floor and that kid learned to crawl in about two minutes <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny it's true Where, how did how did you come up with the name for me my mother's eyes are hazel um I had a thing for vintage oh okay um names in general and um there was nobody that i disliked named hazel that's a big you know i did a lot my grandmother i tutored and things like that um Mm -hmm. so i had a lot of children's names in my head that were like no names like no we can't name our kid that because it reminds me of this person Mm -hmm. and i worked in social services and such too and so um there were a lot of my grandma my grandma was hazel oh And my my girls have all named their children and use all the female names, so they all have three names in their in their name, two middle names and a first name. And but you know that's okay. We don't care. <laughs> well, that's good though. I think that's kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. Pretty cool. So, do we want to wrap it up at like midnight tonight? I'm like wrapping right now. I know. <laughs> I could wrap There's, it up at any I'm point. emotionally here in a little like I'm I'm here because I have to iron these. And I know that if I let you guys go, they're gonna sit here until next week. Okay, <laughs> Stephanie Brennan, you still haven't told them we keep getting off and you don't get it. <laughs> go, girl, go. Um I don't even remember what your question was. <laughs> Tell us all the garment things that uh are Wait, wasn't it like? I think that, it, Stephanie Brennan, tell us the things. <laughs> um, I think that it really is more. I think I think Susan, you said this earlier. It is more of a mindset difference than it is a technique. Um, yeah, I would agree with that. 
because there's, I mean, there's, there is some crossover technique, especially when it comes to curves and such, um, but not really, like, there's more of a crossover between bag making and apparel sewing, I feel like, than quilting. Well, I was curious if you took anything that you use in garment sewing and applied it to your quilting that would not normally be used in, in, like, by most quilters, that most quilters would not, you know, do that process or would not think to do that Um, or something. I can't, I can't think of anything like using a special product or like something like that, that you would normally use in a, or yeah, crossing over the use of a, a ruler or a ham or a, I don't know, anything that you would use in apparel that. Well, for me, like for me, for example, um, when I garment, so, you know, when we garment, so we have the points where you make your, in your seam you know, so you can line up your different um, pieces together and stuff. I actually do that sometimes in my quilting as well. And and I've never seen anybody else do that. But I like precision. And so I like it to come together uh, very well and not, not be off. And I find I use vintage sewing machines and stuff. And so I find that that helps me. Um get that precision I'm looking for. Is there anything like, like something like that that you might? Not that, not that I can think of. Um, Do you ever use that tracing paper in quilting? Not in quilting. I use it all the time. um, In. in Um, I guess maybe. So I have, I've started using my pinking shears and my pinking rotary cutter, which I got it more for apparel because some of those fabrics can fray like there's no tomorrow. Um, And so like with the, with the more fray quilting stuff, I have started using my pinking stuff. That makes sense actually. Yeah. Um, and it, he and even with with, with pre washing, like if I if I do pre wash it or or something, I will I'll cut it with the pinking shears. Something else that I noticed um, when I when I really first started uh, becoming um, more present in like quilting classes and around other quilters, which was about you know ten years ago. Um, that I would do just naturally because I did it around all of my pieces of my patterns. I do the basting stitch around all the pieces so they don't fray. And it's usually just inside my seam allowance. So then that it doesn't show, you know, when I go to put my seam allowance. Well, I do that on a lot of my quilt blocks as well. Just naturally, it's like, that's my pattern part, right? Your quilt block is basically your pattern part. That's but a super I, good idea. I have seen a few other people recently um, do that, but yeah, I, I do that and I love that. And especially if you're working on a quilt for a long time, mm-hmm. it really, really reduces the fraying of the edges. Yeah, I guess I don't understand what you're saying. Okay. So, she basically does a stay stitch around the edge of her block. Yes. So like right here around the edge of the block, I will do almost like a victory lap for the block. Yes. Is that what yeah. Stephanie is that? Yes. So it's a, it's like a mini victory lap. It I is. Finish the block victory lap. What do you call in a victory lap? Like to do the outside to edge do, of your quilt if you don't have a uh, uh, You do like an eighth of an inch stay border. stitch around like the top of your quilt. I do it even if it's a border at the end. And what it I does... I do all the way around the whole thing. Yeah. And so what I, I do... do that's your victory block. lap. So your quilt is done, but in order to keep it from fraying, if you're going to put it on a frame or baste it or whatever, you do your victory lap. Yeah, it's called a right. victory really lap because it's like the last thing you've done. I call right. it a... Oh, please don't I have to do this. I guess I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, we do too. And yeah. that's the other name. Yeah. I do it the small the print. I don't wait. Just tiny little pieces. Yeah, I don't oh, wait. I do it around the block. I, I don't. I also 
I also do it around the quilt, but it's just something that I just naturally did. You know, I didn't know that it was wrong or if it was right or whatever. It's just something that sewing garments for all that time, I did it to my pattern pieces. And as I was putting together um, clothing and stuff, especially when you're dealing with like sateen and, Mm -hmm. you know, those really Mm -hmm. delicate fabrics that are, will really unravel quickly if you're not careful. Um, and stuff. And I, I bring it up because I remember um, the quilt top that I had made and I was, I hadn't taken a, a, you guys were talking about kind of depression a little bit earlier. I was having um, a little bit of that. My daughter was graduating from high school and yada, yada, you know, you have all the feelings and the empty nest and et cetera, et cetera. And so I had went to the therapist and, you know, cause I was sad and stuff. And he said, well, which find a hobby, do this, do whatever. And so my homework was to take a quilting class at a quilting shop. And I'm like, I felt super uncomfortable with that because I had never really been around that environment or whatever. But I had a quilt top I had made. And so I took it into the class because they had said, bring in something, show and tell, whatever. And the lady, I don't think they were trying to be critical or whatever, but it was like they were picking apart all the things that I did that wasn't normal to do, I guess. And that was one of them. They're like, oh, this is an unnecessary step. You don't have to. This is a waste of time. This adds thread to your um, quilt top and extra bulk for, for this thread or whatever. But I liked it. Like, I'm here was, for class, woman. Like, give me a break. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> those, you do what you, you do. You know, those, whatever makes those kind of people in you. your life is my right. thought. Like, right. I had it's experience. Me, yeah. But I don't think Sorry, they were trying to be mean. I don't think they were trying no. to be mean. I think they were just, you know. Helpful, they, maybe. Yeah, helpful? maybe they were trying to be helpful. And so I, w- I was always puzzled by that. It didn't stop me from continuing to do it, you know. It's just something that I, I know that it it wasn't normal within the quilting arena, I guess. Yeah. I had that experience at a quilt shop just this couple days ago. I was in looking for a, a piece that I'm putting in a Robin Pickens quilt that I'm doing. And there's an older lady in there. And we were talking about making baby blankets. And I showed her a picture of the baby blanket, the baby top that I made just recently for my granddaughter. And she's, Oh, you did that all by hand? I said, no, I didn't do it by hand. But I did it by machine. And she went, oh. And she turned around and acted like I was like, like yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, what? shut up. You Nobody does here, lady. entire I don't want to spend, by hand I, I, This was a quick thing. It's I did for it. a baby. It's going to vomit all over this shit. I know. Like, what the ah. heck? Yeah. I know what I was going to say. Who does back, back stitching when you do things like that? Because that's another Sometimes thing. Sometimes I do. Yeah. And I'm actually very particular about if I know that I'm not doing anything with the piece very quickly, I try to yeah. backstitch at least at the beginning and the end so I don't have to do the victory lap. What about just making your stitch smaller? I mean... I stitch with a 2.0 yeah. and I still yeah, do I the too. victory lap and yeah. the majority of my quilts go straight from the victory lap to the long arm. And I arm, do yeah. it because even though they're not going to like wait for a while... To mm-hmm. go on there, I do it because I get less stretching of the quilt top, and it stays right. more square. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, I didn't yeah. think yeah. about the bias. You know, you, you don't know if you have a bias edge on that outside. Even, so even I, if I you that, don't, don't even if you don't, the process of pinning that top onto your leaders can mm-hmm. stretch it. Like I try really hard every mm-hmm. single time not to stretch it, but then I almost always end up stretching it somewhat and I have to fix it when I get down there. So and I don't have a long arm either. And I it's just a little bit machine. easier when I get one, like because at the shop when we had a whole team, there would be people who would, you know, do tops for us. And if it hadn't done it, I would still go and do it before I put it on just because it makes my job easier when the, at the quilting right. stage. And why not do that if you can, right? Yeah. But okay. we are at midnight. Yay, we made so it to midnight. we will have to hang out again next week. Tell your friends. And same bat time, same And we'll bat try time. to remember yeah. to advertise of some sort. <laughs> as, as long as I have well, a better week than I did this week, it'll be fine. <laughs> okay, wait, one more picture. Let me send this. This is the quilt that I did for my son and his bride for their wedding this last June. Mm-hmm. And I that's all 
pulled it on my machine at uh, my little machine. I don't have a long arm. Oh my gosh. Oh, you did a great job. Ow. It was so fun. I don't know if you can zoom or if you can even see that I'm zooming or not. I take it that but, they like camping. But I love those lanterns. Yeah. Yeah, seriously. The lanterns. All of the lamp have different like different patterns on the handles and everything, and and I did a massive bunch of bubbles in the background of the of the uh, fire, and the fires all got flames on it. And uh, did this you is my see? Favorite pattern too. Did you see the new panel that is like the campfire where you make? Uh, it's like a a stuffy of the campfire. Yeah, this is all pieced. It's it's brand new. Somebody just yeah. put it out. That would look so cute with that quilt. Where you actually make a campfire. It's like a 3D, you know, like a stuffed oh, animal. Oh, yeah. I campfire. saw that. Just recently, somebody was showing it online. Yeah. They got it in their shipment or something. I, I want to get that um, for my grandson. Make it for my grandson. Very cool. That's a great idea. I just followed you on That's Instagram, funny. by the way. Okay. I'll get there. Oh, we'll get I don't it. know where I put my phone. Typical. This is, this is a common problem for me, too, as well. <laughs> I all lose right. it all the time. Well, thank you for I'm sewing with us late. Room. I'll be chatting forever, so I'm hanging up for it so you guys can go to bed. And yeah. <laughs> we, will, we will see you next Sorry. week. On uh, Friday? Yeah, Friday. We usually yeah. get started at 9.30. We'll do the same thing Control. and send out a little, a little okay. doodad, because that's how I found you, was you pop up on my YouTube because I follow you. Yep. So, yeah, and that's us. usually how that works, so. I'll come and annoy you. I might comb my hair too. So You're not sure. annoying. Maybe you, you know, fine. I didn't comb my hair. I or, gave or myself not. a blowout today because I was going to be in public. Yeah. But that was Well, I live in an RV. So I, I sew in a four by five space. That's it. Four feet by five feet. Oh, and man. oh yeah. It's smaller than my table. Super fabulously wonderful. Let me tell you what. There's <laughs> no limitations then that we can't overcome if she's, yeah. you know. Do her I've, four by hey, five RV. I've done I've done twelve quilt tops this year. That's amazing. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, you know, when you get I have piles. I have piles. I have I have scrapbooking boxes with projects in them that are looking at me all the time. I'm like, shut up, don't look at me. <laughs> look the other way. I know, right? <laughs> Stop looking at me. A exhibit yeah, A. I don't look at me. <laughs> yeah. I'm feeling judged by my projects. Me too. Yes, exactly. yeah. I've been stalked. All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining right. us and we will see you next All week. Right. See you next Bye, week. Bye friends. Bye. We'll see you.